CBS presents this program in color. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. If what you desire is constant change in the Winston Cup point standings, this has been your year. Dale Earnhardt was hardly done celebrating his first Daytona victory when Rusty Wallace took the top spot. And for a couple months, the points lead was mine. In week 10, Jeremy Mayfield was smiling as he took over the lead in California. Until Jeff Gordon sparkled again at Charlotte for the third straight year, and there was yet another King of the Hill. After 11 weeks, I found my way to the top. Although they've never led the season's points themselves, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, and Terry Labonte are among the pack of six within 93 of the lead. Which brings us to Michigan, where number one is once again Jeremy Mayfield. And this time, I plan on keeping it. Celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary. CBS Sports presents the Michigan 400. Michigan Speedway, 114,000 seats, and it still can't stay ahead of the demand. Sold out four months in advance, some 40,000 additional in the infield. That's more than we're here for that very first race we saw in 1969. All part of the 50th year celebration of NASCAR racing in America. And a good, good day, everyone. Ken Squire with you here at this two-mile Michigan track, a track that helped to define modern-day Winston Cup racing. This track, this event, 30 years ago, 35 official lead changes around this thing. It was unheard of. And at the end, as much as the competition was talked about was the controversy. Down here at the end of the race, final lap in turn number one, Cale Yarborough, Leroy Yarborough side by side. Leroy in the wall, Cale went on to victory, and they're still talking about that one. And controversy still reigns today. Let's go to the videotape. One day there you go here. It was happy hour, the final moments. And Rusty Wallace on the inside. Earnhardt is on the outside. At 190 miles per hour, it's Earnhardt in the wall. And he loses his primary car. He's gone to the backup. He'll start dead last today. Another look from Jeremy Mayfield's viewpoint. Wallace said it was his fault after. That wasn't enough for Earnhardt. He grabbed him right by the uniform and said, you wrecked my car before he stormed off. The controversy is continuing. And with more on the controversy, let's go to Dick Bergman. Thanks, Ken. The turmoil for this team began even before they came to Michigan. With personnel changes, Earnhardt arrived with a new crew chief, and as for the backup car, it is a short track car that the team has hastily turned into a super speedway car between yesterday afternoon and literally just a few minutes ago. They have made dramatic changes on this race car to get it on the grid. But the guy behind the wheel has made good things happen beyond the wildest dreams of most race cars. And so, Dale Earnhardt, how do you make the most of this day? Well, I think we've got a good race car under us. It's just going to be a little different not having any practice on it. But uh, we just have to go hard as we can and adjust as we go. Uh, you know, just bad luck has really bit us in the, in the month of May and the 1st of June here. Charlotte was a really tough time for us. And the practice yesterday, we didn't need to lose that race car. So we just go after them best we can, see what happens. You are pretty mad at Rusty yesterday. Still mad at him? No, nah, that, that, you know, the heat of the moment and everything, uh, I looked at the replay. I know he didn't mean to wreck me, but it, I just didn't need it. I didn't need to wreck for the, the guy, the team, everybody, all the guys worked so hard on the team, and we just didn't need that to happen to us. You need a little good luck, and we wish you that today, Dale Earnhardt. 
Terrell Shaheen. Last Saturday night at Richmond, Jeff Gordon in the multicolored number 24 was racing for the lead on the outside, trying to pass the blue number two of Rusty Wallace. Contact sent Jeff into the wall and to a 37th place finish. As they came here to Michigan, Jeff Gordon is looking for his first ever win at this racetrack. He'll start on the outside of row number two, a good place to go for your first win. But look who is right alongside his nemesis of a week ago, Rusty Wallace. And Rusty, you can see the damage from the incident with Earnhardt yesterday already on the right side of the car. He will start on the inside of row number two. And we'll sneak in here for a quick word. Rusty, two weeks in a row, you have been under the microscope with a bright spotlight shining on you. How do you get ready to go racing here today? Well, we've got a good car. We're in good shape. And, uh, you know, all I can say is last week was racing. This week, it was my fault. I, I pulled off something that was really stupid. Uh, the car was running great. I drove alongside Earnhardt into one. I just flat lost it. And when I lost it, I got up alongside of him. And, uh, all I can say is I'd like to apologize to him and all his fans and everybody. I, I hate it that it happened, but uh, Dale came over to me this morning, talked for about 20 minutes. He's fine with it. I'm fine with it. Let's just have a great race today. But again, I'd like to apologize for everybody that happened. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a better race car driver than just to flat drive it down there to lose it. I used to laugh at people who done that. I have to laugh at myself now. Good luck to you, Rusty. Let's go down to Bill Stevens, who is standing by with the man at the head of the points lead. And he is Rusty Wallace's teammate, Jeremy Mayfield, in the number 12 Taurus, owned by Roger Penske. Jeremy has not won a race yet this year. His best finish was second in California, a racetrack owned by Roger Penske. Wait, it gets better. He owns this racetrack, too. So, Jeremy, if you're going to win your first race, this would be the place to do it. Man, it sure would. You know, uh, we'd like to do that for Roger and this whole Mobile One race team. And, uh, you know, we're all just real excited about today and feel like we got a good race car here. So let's see what happens. If he wins, he'd be the second youngest winner here in history. Bill Elliott won in 1984 at the age of 28. Jeremy turned 29 three weeks ago. Now to the top of the grandstands in the announce booth where the man who's going to make the call of this race is standing by, Mike Joy. Thank you, Bill, and hello, everybody. Largest single-day sporting event crowd in the history of the state of Michigan. What's brought them is this tight point race, the unparalleled view from this curved grandstand around the front straightaway, and what a place to go racing. The points, how tight are they? Five drivers are within 53 points at the top of the chart. Any one of these six could leave Michigan with the point lead today. So I turn to my experts. The 1979 winner, Buddy Baker, and two-time Winston Cup champion, Ned Jarrett. Buddy, this place is so wide and so competitive. Competitive. Professor, what do we see today? Hmm. Believe me, four wide down the front straightaway, 200 miles an hour going into turn one. You have to have a car that goes through the corner, handles very well. You have to have short track characteristics through the corner, a fast car down the straightaway. Well, Ned, the heartbreaks here have come not from lack of speed, but sometimes lack of the right race strategy. Yeah, and that could include, uh, do you change two tires during a pit stop or no tires or whatever. We'll see that going on during today to get track position and then towards the end of the race to try to win the race. But fuel mileage always comes to mind when you come to Michigan because the track is so wide, the racing group wide, we don't have many incidents that brings out caution flags. So fuel mileage is a concern, and the driver can have a lot to do with that here today. Fuel conservation may start right now. Some drivers may not fire off until the pace car moves. Let's go trackside for the command. Gentlemen, start your engines! There's the command. gave the command he won the first nascar race here 30 years ago get strapped in for the starting lineup next in celebration of nascar's 50th anniversary cbs sports coverage of the michigan 400 is sponsored by ford the official truck of nascar is built ford top goodyear innovators of run flat technology and by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. Yeah, I'm on.
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ken, you're welcome. Yes, Eric. Oh, yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Three pace laps. Surprising since we Welcome back to the Irish Hills of Michigan. This two-mile super speedway just packed with race fans in the field, 43 of them rolling out for the first of three pace laps. Today, it's been warm and it was sunny all morning, but you see those big clouds. And at 75 degrees, the humidity now up to 60%, 10 mile per hour winds from out of the west, 116 trackside, 111 in cars as they rolled off and a threat of rain later this afternoon. We had hail, tornadoes, thunderstorms on Friday here. Here's how they'll line up. First bowl of the year for Ward Burton. He and Dale Jarrett each get their second front row starts of the year. Row number two, Rusty Wallace, a three-time winner here, and Jeff Gordon, who's never won here. Kevin LePage, the rookie, has a great effort going fifth, and Bill Elliott, who's won here seven times. Mark Martin, a three-time winner this year, and Wally Dahlenbach takes over Ricky Craven's car. Ricky Rudd won here in 93. Jeff Burton won the IROC race yesterday here. Terry Labonte won that thriller at Richmond last week, and Darrell Waltrip in Dale Earnhardt's car. Lake Speed makes his 400th start this afternoon, and the rookie point leader, Kenny Irwin, Jr. Jeremy Mayfield is the point standing leader. Joe Nemechek, fourth at Texas, his best this year. Bobby Labonte swept both races here in 95, and Rich Bickle returns. He's in for injured Greg Sachs. Bobby Hamilton won at Martinsville this year. Jeff Bodine, a winner here in 94 in August. Johnny Benson had a top 10 here last year, and Ted Musgrave, a third and a fourth in last year's two Michigan races. Kenny Wallace with three top 10s this season, and Michael Walter makes his 26th start here. Dale Earnhardt is a two-time winner of this race, last in 1990, and Morgan Shepard has a new ride for the Stavola brothers. Jerry Nadeau made his Winston Cup debut a year ago here. Rick Mass, third here in 94. Brett Bodine and Jimmy Spencer, a pair of Fords in row 15. Jeff Green makes his sixth start of the year. He's been with three different teams. And Ernie Urban, the defending race winner. John Andretti crashed in practice. He lines up with Kenny Schrader. Gary Bradbury, the Alabama driver, with Sterling Marlin. Chad Little, runner-up in Texas with Dick Trickle. Steve Grissom and Robert Presley, who was third in Texas. Mike Skinner back in row 21 with Kyle Petty and Hunt Strickland out with the Stavolas in with Buzz McCall, David Green out of that seat. That's how they'll line up today. And several drivers failed to qualify for this race, including Todd Bodine, Derek Cope, Dave Marcus, and Tony Raines, who was trying to make his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. Let's see what we have in the field today as far as the manufacturer's breakdown. You have 23 Fords, 15 Chevrolets, and 5 Pontiacs. You see the Chevrolet is only one point ahead of Ford in the manufacturer's championship run. There are 43 cars starting today's race. We'll go 200 laps, 400 miles. Fuel window, 45 to 55 laps. Total purse. $1.8 million, and the record for the race was set by Rusty Wallace in 1996 at over 166 miles an hour. Pretty fast average, including pit stops. Look at this racetrack. It's a D-shaped oval here, 18 degree backing in uh, the corners, front straightaway, 12 degrees, and 5 degrees on the back straightaway, and it is quick. Driver scrubbing tires and warming up. There's that second pace car midway through the field to take them around at pit road speed. The drivers can get a check on their tachometers. We'll go to pit road, get a check from Dick Bergeron. 
Well, we've been talking a lot about very few caution flags here, Mike. The average is 5.2 caution flags over the last five years. If you take the whole Winston Cup circuit, it's six and a half. What that means is fuel mileage has a huge premium, and so does getting every pit stop right. There are fewer pit stops to make up for a mistake, so everyone has got to be perfect. To Bill Stevens. Darrell Waltrip and his team in the Pennzoil car, they have high hopes. Remember, they finished fifth in California earlier this year, and a lot of teams, after they win a race or finish in the top five, they go testing and try to tweak the car. This car hasn't been out of the box since they finished fifth, and they think that it's ready for this racetrack. Ralph Shaheen. Our pole man, Ward Burton, woke up this morning feeling pretty sick to his stomach. He doesn't know what is wrong. He's got cramps. It's been a problem that's kind of swept through the garage area a little bit. Ward is hoping he can kick the bug with a victory here today. You're looking at our Tabasco in-car cam, and it's uh, mounted in the Bill Davis Pontiac for Ward Burton, who starts from the pole. Just the Pontiac safety car out in front of him. We're on our third and final pace lap. We'll ride with both halves of the front row, the Quality Care Ford Credit Cam, riding with Dale Jarrett and Robert Yates racing Ford from second starting spot. Jeff Gordon will have a CBS race cam on board today in his Hendrick Racing Chevy, starting in the second row next to Rusty Wallace. And the Valvoline in-car camera for Mark Martin in the Roush Racing Ford starting in seventh position. A three-time winner this year and strong in yesterday's practice. Randy LaJoy back into the Bush Series, which conflicts with dates here in Winston Cup. So Wally Dahlenbach takes over that car for injured Ricky Craven. The Budweiser race camp starting from eighth. And our CBS race cam on board with Jeremy Mayfield, the point standing leader, goes off 15th in the Penske Cranifus Racing Ford. And the Phillips Electronics onboard camera mounted on Jeff Bodine's Matty Racing Ford from 20th position. Now, Dale Earnhardt qualified 25th, the last driver to lock in a speed on the first day of qualifying Friday. But that brush with the wall damaged his car too badly to be repaired for today's race. So he has to drop back in the field on this final pace lap, and he will start scratch. Ken Squire? Modern Winston Cup history, you have a car that is coming from the second day of qualifying, Morgan Shepard, who is the fastest car here at over 182 miles per hour. Morgan driving that Circuit City, number eight, starting in 26th position. Fastest car here for both days, but the field, the first 25, are set from Friday's qualifying. Getting ready for a start, here's Mike Joy. It was about 85 degrees that first day of qualifying, and it was some 20 degrees cooler yesterday. So Shepard has the top speed of the week. Pace car dives in as they come up from 55 miles an hour to the green flag. Position. Working that low line off 
turn four is a favorite spot for them to get three wide, and there they are. Kenny Wallace down on the bottom, Jeff Bodine, Bobby Hamilton. Talk about manufactured parity, Mike. You got a Pontiac out front, a Chevrolet in second, and a Ford in third. Of course, it's early in the race. <laughs> it looks to me like Jeff Gordon in second place right there and really wants to lead and get that five point bonus for leading this race. He's making a charge this week. And here is Earnhardt. He is up to 36th position after starting 43rd, Ken. Yeah, he's on the charge in that first lap alone. He knocked off seven, picked up one more. He is flying as he closes in here on 10th Street. Has not had a chance to even check on this car. It's absolutely fresh. No laps on it as it comes down the main straightaway. Tracking Kenny Schrader off into the corner goes Earnhardt in an untested car. Buddy, a short track car. But is that really a disadvantage here? I don't think so. I think the corners, first of all, run fast down the straightaway. You have to get through the corners good and clean. You can see Earnhardt's car not getting him any trouble. He seems to be able to run with Kenny Schrader, and he has his best car here. Four laps complete under green. Ward Burton, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, Bill Elliott. Multiple winner here. Strong horse today, Elliott and Rusty Wallace. That lead draft is about half a mile long. You can see Jeff Gordon now moving in on the quarter panel there. Right now, he would love to have that extra little five-point bonus at the end of the year. If you lead every race, that can be a huge advantage. Ralph Shaheen. Mike Ward Burton and the team won the pole using the older 18 degree engine from Chevrolet and General Motors. Here today, they are racing the brand new SB2. They used the old 18 degree engine to qualify because it was a much better qualifying program from last year, but they feel that they can race better with the SB2. Bill Stevens? Not only that, but the engine builder for that team is Terry Ellich, who put in a long time with the children's team. He knows how to make a race motor make horsepower. The 18 degrees is the fast to cylinder head angle and General Motors new engine is used by most of the teams here they call it the SV2 or small block generation 2 the first engine dates to 1955 and here comes Gordon hunting the lead he looks underneath Ward Burton as they come off the corner and Mark Martin trying to make a move back there but here is Gordon now on the inside he's going to lead this lap Give him the five points. He did lead that lap as they come by the flag here. The two points have linked up together and caught the uh, lead to some now. So we have a good race up front. Every driver that leads a lap in a Winston Cup race gets five bonus points. The driver who leads the most laps gets an additional five points. So Jeff Gordon's Chevy out in front of Ward Burton's Pontiac and Dale Jarrett's Ford. Then Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace. Wally Dallenbach in sixth. Dark horse or strong horse Dallenbach today? I would say he would have to be considered a dark horse, but he also has a very strong horse today in that Chevrolet number 50. And there's something about not having a regular ride on the uh, season that would make you extend yourself a little extra here. And everybody pulls well, Wally Dallenbach to get a good ride because we think he has a lot of ability. Top road racer. Making a strong transition to oval track. You're on board with Mark Barton. Following Jeff Burton. This for seventh place. And a fierce battle mid-pack Jimmy Spencer, that white and red 23. And here comes Darrell Walter from the one. Darrell Walter making a the move there on the, the tide car of uh, Ricky Rudd. And you can see Bobby Lobani going right with him as they try to draft by. Strong car, though, that Ricky Rudd has down the straightaway. Remember this speedway, much like Penske's new California speedway, where the elder Walter finished fifth earlier this year. There's Bobby Labonte in the Joe Gibbs, number 18, the green Pontiac, trying to pass the Ford of Ricky Rudd down the inside. Bobby Labonte won the, both races here at Michigan back in 1995. One of them was on fuel miles, the other one was on sheer speed. That battle's for 13. See Terry Labonte in the five car there starting to drift up the racetrack just a little bit, not able to run the low line with his brother there to help him. Just as I say that, they get in tow down the front straightaway, and you can see it's nice to have a brother in the race. 
Look at Darrell Waltrip continue to move up underneath Kevin LePage, who started fifth. And that Joe Falk Chevrolet. Bill? Darrell Waltrip looking strong. His scorer is Karen Musencap. Her dad, Jack Madden, is a big Darrell Waltrip fan. He found a four-leaf clover in front of his house a couple of months ago and said to Karen, give it to Darrell. She forgot to do it before the Texas race, and he crashed in the second lap. She remembered to give it to him before the California race, and he finished fifth. I can guarantee you the four-leaf clover is on board that car today. Here is Earnhardt. He's moving fast. Look at Earnhardt right on the white line, getting into turn three there. Very fast car in the corner. Down the straightaway, he lacks a little bit. You can see Johnny Benson in 26, full about a car lift down the straightaway on Earnhardt. But in the corner, he is awesome. He has come from 43rd to 28th position. He's almost back where he would have been. He would have started 25th had it not been for the accident yesterday. Let's go to the pits and Dick Bergman. And I'm with his car owner, Richard Childress. Is this surprising even you? No, you know, we, you know, I felt the car would run good. You know, we, you know, we just got a pretty good car. It's a Bristol car. And all the guys this morning talked about all the things we could do last night and today to it. And so far, it's working pretty good. But not a lap on it before this race. But not a lap turned on a racetrack before today with the setup. No, not really. We just took the set off, off, off the car yesterday, and that's what we're using. Well, Earnhardt is moving forward, and the fans are loving it. He's whipping that horse, Dick, but he's got to get going as he moves up under Chad Little and Michael Waltrip. Thinks about it. And Earnhardt's saying, I might even drive the flat part of the racetrack. <laughs> so low in the corner. You can see him pick him off when he gets to the corner. Down the straightaway, he's barely able to hold his own. But in the corner, it's awesome. They Look how deep he drives it into the corner. That's vintage Earnhardt right there. He's got to get going, Ned, because those front 10 cars have broken away. Back through Jeremy Mayfield, they have split this field pretty much in half. Ernie Irvin to the bottom of the racetrack. There was some of that three-wide racing we talked about. And they've tried to carry it on into the corner and decided that wasn't a smart thing to do, and I agree with them. It's Earnhardt fun to watch in this back camera here from the Bo Dimes car. You can see through the corner, he picked up three spots just in the one corner there. I tell you, way that thing's going, Rusty Wallace might have done him a favor yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Not that his other car wasn't good, but this one sure is working now. Jeff Gordon leads, Ward Burt, Dale Jarrett, and Bill Elliott in the Michigan 400. You're going to have to use your line. How they don't tug, they tug on Superman's cape. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. He's going to use his tires up if he stays down there where nobody's running. Yeah. You wait and see. Well. You can't just keep leaning on those tires and not have any rubber in the pavement where you're running. Yeah. I promise. Jeff, Jeff Burke is living breathe. He was the fastest in practice yesterday. He had to I'll tell you what, while he wears the tires out, he's running. No, no, it's, it's okay. It's just a car. Jeff Gordon making a stinker out of this right now. Well, yeah, but there's other good racing going on. Lots so. of it. <clears throat> hey, Mike. Hey, Ralph. Uh, just so you know, Morgan yeah. Shepard thinks he's dropped a cylinder. Oh, my. Okay. Well, if you see it, pick it up. Yeah, we'll do that. And Thanks, uh, <laughs> this is Bill. Hello, everybody. Hi, Bill. <laughs> uh, Kenny Schrader is saying that that car is tight everywhere. Going in, coming out. You know, uh, guys, at some point, with Wally in the top ten here, it might be worth a word from his crew chief about working with a new driver and... You know, he, he's doing quite a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. How about it, Pam? Won't we go down and do that? All right. That's our car's moving. Thanks, Dick. 21st already. Huh? Wow. We need to watch well, that shot. Yeah, down on the inside trying to take over. Yeah, 99 is, is coming. That is a very cool shot. Hit the, hit the top back. Well.
Welcome back to Michigan, where Jeff Gordon is threatening to run away. But the battle from second on back is a hot one. Ward Burton, Dale Jarrett, Bill Elliott, and Jeff Burton is coming. Mike, you can see the interval there. That's uh, about a quarter of a turn that Jeff Gordon leads by. You can see right there Gordon going by. Pretty good gap in between he and second place. A look at that 99 car. He's come right up net on Bill Elliott. Yes, he has. He started in 10th place. He is now running in the fifth position. And he's been running there, just sort of sizing that group up right in front of him. He has the faster car. Now he gets on the inside of Elliott. And Jerry gets on the inside of Ward Burton. Ned, I think what they're doing, a lot of the spotters on top of the grandstand up here are seeing Earnhardt run the low line and really making time. They say try the bottom of the racetrack. It seems very quick, and you can see the front cars now starting to use a lower line through the corner, just as Burton's doing right there. Goes past his older brother, Ward, who started on the pole, and Jeff Burton rolls up toward the front of the field. Gordon across the line with a two-second lead on Dale Jarrett. Jeff and Ward Burton, Bill Elliott, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Wally Donald back in eight, Jeremy Mayfield, ninth, Kenny Irwin in ten. There comes Mark Martin using that low line there, trying to go by. You can tell the lower part of the racetrack right now is favoring the cars that can run down there. And Ned Ward Burton's car is just climbing the hill in every corner. Yes, there he is, is on the right of the screen. Yeah, the handle has gone away a little bit on him, Mike. It was very fast there those first few laps, but after the tires have heated up, you can see it moving up there. And Mark Martin now coming down on the inside of him as they come off the turn four. From Ward Burton's car, looking back at Bill Elliott. You can see that Ward Burton has a very fast car down the straightaway there. What happened to Mark Martin? He was passed about a minute ago. I would bet that all coming off that corner, he lost a little bit of grip and had to get out of the throttle. Once you lose momentum on this racetrack, it takes a while to get back. Mark Martin coming back on the inside and now drifting back because he's alone in the low lane. And look at him lined up to draft on the outside. Rusty Wallace in the number two. Moves past Mark. Here comes Mark again. <laughs> well, he's running the low line, but you see right there, the car tends to move up the racetrack. He loses a little forward bite as he comes out of the corner, and you can see Bill Elliott kind of move away about a car length down the straightaway. Ned, how much of that is uh, handling, and uh, how much of that may be the draft? Because there, now Martin's up in the draft. A lot of it is handling because he, when he's down on the inside, his car, he doesn't get the line that he needs, and it sort of pinches it off and binds the car up coming off of the corner, and he loses momentum. As you said that, he went to the outside of Ward Burton. He's going to try to pass on the outside, and he has the drafting partner now, Bill Elliott in the 94. Rusty Wallace just behind him in the two. Mark Barton and Jeff Burton were likely the fastest cars in yesterday afternoon's late practice. And while all that racing was going on, Jeff Burton moved around Dale Jarrett, took over second. And he's going to see if he can do anything about that lead that Jeff Gordon has been building up, which is now extended to about 2.7 seconds. There's the loneliest man in town. <laughs> Jeff Gordon, 2.7 seconds ahead of the field. Gordon, your leader. Jeff Burton, that black and pink car in second. A Ford. Dale Jarrett's Ford. Bill Elliott's Ford. Mark Martin's Ford, one Chevy, four Ford, and then the Pontiac Ford, Burton. And now a wide variety of lines mm -hmm. coming off the corner. Well, the, yeah. from Jeff Bodine, that's Michael Waltrip, number 21 on the outside. Michael Waltrip using all the racetrack high in the middle part of the corner, down the straightaway. Michael Waltrip has a very good car, as you can see. The, the uh, car that we're riding with uh, Bodine down the straightaway, losing some car lengths down the straightaway. Two updates from the pit. Morgan Shepard may have lost the cylinder. And Kenny Schrader, car handling tight, drifting back. Here's our first plus financial onboard telemetry on Jeff Bodine. You can see as he comes out of the corner there, he starts building 8,000 right along there. Gets to 85, almost 9,000, and close to, well, it is 200 miles an hour, right at the end of the straightaway as he goes into turn three. Car outside with John Andretti. And now Jeremy Mayfield has passed Wally Donald back and caught up with his stable mate, Rusty Wallace. You're watching from Donald back on the butt cam. Ricky Craven hoping to be back in the seat of that car, perhaps at Daytona, and if not, soon. Dick Bergeron, 
Well, traditional wisdom is it takes a long time for a driver and crew chief to get to work well together. But Tony Furr and Wally Dullenbach in the number 50 car qualified the top 10. They're running in the top 10. How have you guys clicked so fast? Well, you know, uh, I've worked with a lot of drivers over my I've worked with a lot of drivers over my career and stuff. And uh, Wally, uh, he seems to be a pretty good driver uh, to work with too because he's uh, been around quite a bit and uh, worked with different crew chiefs and all. And uh, he's given me real good feedback to get the brand new cars. Uh, Hendrick Motorsports, they're a great place to work and with the sport that you got from Hendrick and Chevrolet. Uh, and Budweiser, I mean, you got to do good. You don't have a choice. And Dallenbach said this morning that even though he is known as a road racer, he very much wants to win his first Winston Cup race on an oval. There's Brett Bodine on the inside battle. He's uh, in 32nd position. Mike with Hunt Strickland and Rich Bickle. Mike, if Wally Dallenbach was to win his first race here, he would be the first driver that ever won his first race here in Michigan. That's right, no first time winners here. Dale Jarrett won his first ever Winston Cup race. Uh -oh. Except, Except Dale Jarrett. Jarrett. Thank Except you. Dale Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. Dad. Here's a battle for the fourth position. Mark Martin has been up beside Bill Elliott several times. You see, he's using that low groove. Elliott in the 94 red car, using the high groove. Still hasn't been able to make the pass. Let's go to the pits and Bill Steve. check back with Bill in a moment. There's Martin again looking to the low side on Elliott. Side by side and Elliott eases ahead just a bit again. Yeah, he has the momentum coming off the high side of the racetrack and it shoots him down the straightaway and Mark will run in there the next stop. Move down to the inside. Bill will still give him plenty of room down there because apparently his car is working better up there. You see Dale Jarrett running up there. The car up in front of them there is the 99 of Jeff Burton. So he's using sort of the middle of the groove. That time Mark was not able to get on the inside of there. So he have to try another strike. And Jeff Gordon's lead now at three seconds. Another good battle. That's Rusty Wall, or rather Jeremy Mayfield, moving underneath the pole center Ward Burton. Here comes Rusty Wallace, so Mayfield got past his teammate. Yeah, you see Rusty right now looking on the low side of Bodine as they come off the corner there, but uh, wow, I mean, they're really looking for places to run. Ward Burton, excuse me for saying that. From the Tabasco cam on Ward Burton's car. Average speed through 50 miles, 176 miles an hour. That is fast company. The pack begins to string out just a bit here. Leader Jeff Gordon is by himself. Then that four car draft for second. Then four cars battling for fifth. And three battling for ninth. Wally Dollenbach come down the straightaway there. Closed a lot of ground on the, uh, You can see there that Rusty Wallace is really battling a loose condition getting in the corner. Wally Dollenbach made a great move going into turn Ooh, one. Ooh, they bumped. They got together a little bit there. No hard done. Those cans aren't recyclable, guys. <laughs> it looks like that upper groove in the racetrack is working better for most of the drivers. Well, that's awesome. Uh, yes, here's Ward Burton. He has a run in the 22 car. Well, he got picked up a draft and shot down on the inside. Let's see if it works for him as he goes into the turn. That's Rusty Wallace up there on the outside. And no, Don Wally Dallenbach is going to maintain the position. Let's have a look at the interval from Jeff Gordon back to Jeff Burton from the Goodyear Blitz. Let's see up here's Gordon and down here is a four car race for second place. You said that right. It is definitely a four car race. Now it's back to just uh, a two car running side by side. They come off the corner. Everybody singles back out going down the straightaway. But they are going at it as Jarrett tries to go by Burton for second. And that's one reason they're not catching Jeff Gordon, because they keep trading up that second spot. Oh, Burton's going to drift back in yeah, fifth place. His car was very fast there for a while, but then apparently the, the tires got heated up and the chassis didn't suit hot tires, and so now he has dropped back to the fifth position. 31 laps complete. Jeff Gordon out in front of Jeff Burton, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, and Bill Elliott. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Burton 
it's okay. It's, it's just the Tabasco camera. Yeah. Well, they got their money's worth. Ooh, three wide out of four. Yeah, the, the story there is he says he's perfect. Who's that? Who says he's Ooh, perfect? Could be four wide down here. Hey, Ralph. Buddy Parrot does. Oh. Well, there's some other ones a little more perfect then. Exactly. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, I looked at that Tabasco. I went, oh my. And then I remembered. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, well, if that's the worst thing I do today, I'll be all right. Okay. They're still going at it. Okay. Welcome back to Michigan. Jeff Gordon leads by 3.1 seconds. 1998 marks the 100th anniversary for the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company for the last 70 years. You've been watching the Goodyear blimps hovering over many terrific events. Today, it's the spirit of Akron carrying on that proud Goodyear tradition. A lot of great three wide racing toward the back of this pack. They're three wide now and four wide as they started off the corner. You can see there the 77 of Presley in the middle there, Freighter, and on the very bottom there, that's uh, Rick, Rick Mast. Mast in the 75 car. And they just won't give it up. Kenny Wallace has been right in there with them. Or excuse me, that's uh, Mike Skinner just behind. They have really been going at it, but Mike, it's costing them because they're not uh, as far as they would like to be in front of the leader, Jeff Gordon. They're racing out of turn four right now as Gordon goes in to turn three. There's your leader. Warren Burton led at the top of the day. Jeff Gordon took over and took off. Look at the interval. There's Gordon left side of your screen. Here comes that pack chasing him. Mark Martin into second place. I believe these four cars right here are catching Gordon just a little bit now. They're running him down as they are fighting it back. You can see it's less than a half a corner now that the uh, lead has right now. These well, guys are flying. They had cut it down to about 3.1 seconds, but now with that pass that Mark Martin made the last time around, they were three and a half seconds behind, so they're just a little bit of a pass to make a difference. Now, I expect Mark Martin, now that he's got a third second, he seems to have a, a very fast car that he might close it in. When two of those cars get side by side, they displace a much larger volume of air, and it slows them both down. The one thing that right now that Mark Martin would love to have is to have Jarrett where he could go to the bottom of the racetrack, but uh, Jarrett's car seems to be working better on the high side of the racetrack, so they can't really form a great draft all the way around the racetrack. Martin is second in the number six. Jarrett's 88 is third. The 94, that's Bill Elliott in the 99. Jeff Burton, winner of yesterday's IROC race. Jimmy Spencer with Ernie Irvin, last year's winner. And Mike, Ernie Irvin has made a great run up through the field. He's up to 13th position now. He came from 32nd at that Pontiac number 36. So Ernie having a great run here, moving towards the front. Ernie Irvin. He's about uh, 16, almost 17 seconds behind the leader. But coming through the traffic the way that he has cost you a lot of times, as we talked about there a moment ago. It would cost you a half a second or less when you get on the inside of somebody or make a pass. Ernie Irvin nearly lost his life at this racetrack. A practice crash, 
left him with a 20% chance of survival and perhaps no chance to ever race again. But he came back in 96 and won this race one year ago, starting 20th. So going from the back to the front here is nothing new for Ernie Irvin. Not at all, and he's got a great drafting partner there with Bobby Labonte in the green car just behind him, and just behind him, Bobby Appleton. At third place, Dale Jarrett holding Bill Elliott at bay. Bill's made a couple runs at him, but so far has not been able to make a pass. You can see he pulls up coming off to the corner. It looks like Jarrett's car might be a little bit tight coming off to the corners. Maybe that's the reason he's running that high line, buddy. Yeah, you can tell that he's not able to go down on the bottom part of the racetrack. It seems to be quicker for the guys that can't run the lower part as Bill Elliott starts to make the pass there. Dick Berger. The crews on pit road are getting ready to make their first set of pit stops. Bill Elliott's team said they will come in somewhere between lap 47 and 48. Rusty Wallace's team said right around lap 49. Gordon thinks maybe they can go to lap 50. That is fairly risky going that far, but Michigan is a fuel mileage track and you got to take a little bit of risk. This is Rusty Wallace crew getting ready, doing some exercises, stretching exercises. Terrell Shaheen. Dick, that 50 gamble is going to take place at the far end of pit road down there, turn number one as well. Todd Jarrett telling me that he's going to try to take Dale Jarrett all the way to lap 50. Jimmy Fennick predicting the same for Mark Martin. Now, Ned, while they can go 100 miles or better on fuel, oftentimes if this race starts with a long green flag run, teams will come in at 88, 90, 92 miles to check tire wear and just make sure everything's okay. So I'm a little surprised. Well, yeah, if, but... Uh, if it should go green all the way from start to finish, then they need to go 50 laps each time and only make three pit stops. So they're gonna have that to take into consideration. And that fuel saving strategy has already come into play. Jeff Gordon leads the Michigan 400. We'll be right back. Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco. One, two, three, four, five. This is Ken. One, two, three, four, five. Do you have me? One, two, three, four, five. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco, a world of energy. 30th annual Michigan 400 after 44 laps, 88 miles. You've had a couple of leaders out here, just one lead change. But it's been the story back in the pack with this 175 mile an hour average that has kept this crowd galvanized, mostly in the first 20 laps by Earnhardt. Looks like he may be getting ready to pit. 
in the first 20 laps. He passed 23 cars. Then he backed up two spots. Marlon and Andretti went by him, and he's about 23 seconds down to the leader, running in 21st as he came into pit. First one in, he may have burned up some rubber as he made that big run from last spot. Here's Dick Bergren. Earnhardt, the very first to pit. They're going to try to tighten the car up a little bit. The tail end is trying to lead the nose just a tad on it. They're going to put all the gas in they can possibly get. There's that change right now in the back window to try to tighten the car up with just four fresh tires. Chocolate tires, maybe the most important guy today. He's the fueler. And Earnhardt's gone with a good stop. 20.1 seconds. Bill Elliott is in. So is Ward Burton, the pole sitter. Elliott getting right side tires. They're done. A lot of fuel. Two tire stop, and he's away. That's part of the strategy we talked about that we might see here today. Two tires trying to get track position. Ward Burton, Bill Davis's crew completing the stop. Now that's a four tire change. Second can of gas going in. He's done. He's gone. Rusty Wallace headed down pit road. Now we're just uh, we're working the 49th lap right now. The leader is so. These drivers probably will not be able to make it on uh, three pit stops. Ernie Irvin and Kenny Irwin Jr., Kyle Petty, and Michael Waltrip also in. Dick? Yeah, here's Rusty Wallace. This is a good race car he's got here today. This is the one that finished second at Charlotte in the 600 to Jeff Gordon. They are also going to go the four-tire route for Rusty Wallace. Bob Tracy is the fuel man. Billy Wilbur, the guy on the front tires. And on the rear's Mark Armstrong and good stop for Wallace. 17.2 seconds. Rick Bast is in. Kenny Schrader, Jerry Nadeau. Steve Grissom and point leader Jeremy Mayfield and Joe Nemechek come down pit road. Kenny Irwin is in. 49 laps. Nadeau's pit. A little extra time there on the right rear. And there's Mayfield, second car from the bottom of your screen, the Winston Cup point leader. And the leader is about to enter on pit road. Jeff Gordon making a pit stop. Lake Speed is in. Mark Martin's going to stay out, so he'll leave this lap. The Dale Jarrett comes into the pit. Smart move by Mark Martin. Get him five bonus points. Mike Skinner making a stop. Here's Dale Jarrett. The 98 car for Rich Bickle and Jeff Burton. Dick Bergeron with Gordon. Here comes Jeff Gordon as the Rainbow Warriors get ready to go to work with Shane Parsno on the front tires. Mike Showers on the back. Mike Belden putting a lot of emphasis on getting every possible bit of fuel in. Barry Mews, the Jackman. This is a brand new race car. Turned the wheel for the very first time on Friday. It has been a rocket ever since. Look at this. They want to make sure they get every bit of fuel. 18 seconds pit stop. Let's go to Ralph. Four tires around a wedge on the 99 of Jeff Burton as gas man Jim Gilbert goes to work. Bobby Christensen, the catch can man, watches as they call the 99. When he sees the fuel come out, they let him go once he got it restarted. And here's Mark Martin. You ride with him down pit road as the leader comes in to make his first stop of the day at 51 laps. Mark had taken over the lead when Jeff Gordon came into the pits. He led that one lap. And Got him five bonus points. Let's go back to the pits and route. The big move with Mark Martin's number six is to adjust the air pressure. They want to get him handling better. They change the right side tires and now go to work on the left side. Both cans of gas are going in. They will adjust the air pressure by about a pound to make this race car handle a little bit better. And Mark is back underway. This round of stops should hand the lead back to Jeff Gordon as Wally Dolan back and Bobby Hamilton make their pit stops this time around. Gordon, I, I or think, Bill Elliott. Yeah, Bill Elliott, he only took on two tires. That's I think right. that he, he will be the leader of the race. He isn't too far in front of Jeff Gordon, but Bill Elliott has picked himself up those five bonus points and has the lead at this point. Elliott, a seven-time winner here at Michigan Speedway. The second time he came here, the town of Brooklyn and city of Jackson adopted his race team and a group of local businessmen got on the side of that unsponsored car. One of them was Harry Melling, who owned an oil pump factory here, uh, an automobile engine oil pump factory. And Elliott took Harry Melling well, all the way up to the big league of stock car racing, big time. They became quite a pair together. He did. You riding with Jeff Gordon down the back straightaway as he closes in on race leader Bill Elliott. You can see he closed about six, seven car lengths in that one lap there. And I expect the difference in, in 
having fresh left side tires that Gordon has and Elliott having the tires that he started the race on is going to be a huge difference. Huge indeed. Look at Gordon close on the race leader. 22nd race in Michigan that Elliott has led. But with four fresh tires, Gordon is eating his lunch. Well, you can see Bill Elliott running a much higher line through the corner there. He'd run a high line most of the day, though, and he, he must feel that he had somewhat of a chance, but Gordon was the dominant car before the pit stops also. Well, it's also a concept that they needed to check out. Check it out early in the race, because if it comes to be a factor late in the race, then you know how it will affect your race car. Side by side, coming off turn four and down the front straightaway. Dick Trickle in the 90 just in front there. Jeff Gordon using the slipstream to try to get by. Race leader Bill Elliott. Elliott fights back on the outside. That's how they came out of the pits after those stops. Gordon will go back up front. Kenny Wallace, the square D Ford, has made a second pit stop. He was in a lap 50. He's back in at lap 53, and the right side is still up. Something wrong. It looks like the right rear of Kenny Wallace's car. And, Mike, we also need to, to say we said that Morgan Shepard maybe was fighting a situation of having a cylinder down, so Morgan has made numerous pit stops. He's about 22 laps down, and Kyle Petty also has been running slower on the racetrack than he was earlier in the race, so apparently he has dropped a cylinder, and Kyle is now being shown two laps down. He is in 42nd position. So now, Ned, everyone has made pit stops. For the first time today, we have been caution-free in Michigan through 55 laps, 110 miles. There are your leaders, and there, just back, there's Wally Dolan back, battling Jeremy Mayfield for eighth position after the round of pit stops. Dale Jarrett came out in third, Jeff Burton in fourth, and Ward Burton in fifth on that round of pit stops. Mayfield tightly drafting Dolan back down the back straightaway here. And they'll hit just about 200 miles an hour on our first plus financial telemetry. No, yeah. that's not just about. It's dead even on 209,000 RPMs down the back straightaway. Let's take a ride around the speedway and get a good look at it. As we head towards the start finishing line here, you can see these two cars in draft down the front straightaway using that pull from the first car, leading them down in turn one. Very lines there. You can see Dahlenbach's car a little nervous in the back end as he gets in the middle part of the corner, starting off turn two and down this long back straightaway. They'll achieve about 200 miles an hour before they go down into turn three. And you can see right there, 9,000 RPMs. That's asking a lot out of the valve train. When Ned was talking about dropping the cylinder most of the time, that means the valve goes down and gets into the top of the piston and it ruins the uh, cylinder for that particular car. Moments ago, Morgan Shepard's first ride with the Stavola brothers was a short one. As he took the Circuit City Chevy behind the wall, Shepard replaced Hutch Strickland this week. Strickland was named to drive the Buzz McCall number 96. They released David Green. Jeff Gordon's putting some great cars down right now. Johnny Benson, one of the Roush racing teams there, the 26, goes the lap down to Jeff Gordon. He's really getting around this racetrack well, Ned. Yes, he is. I expected Johnny Benson to be one of a major factor here today. He likes this racetrack. He won a pole here in the past when he was driving for another team and has had some awfully good runs in this car this year, but uh, apparently the chassis is not just right on him today. Benson's from Grand Rapids. It's his home racetrack. Jeff Gordon continues to lead here in Michigan. Uh, here I am, here I am. Thank you very much. That's okay. He doesn't have any real contenders up there. That's probably a good plan. Let's do it. Cam? Yo. Cam? Um, I got a wheel stud, too, to show it. Can I see the leaderboard, please? 
see how many uh, interesting which, names are on it. Which one do you like? I'm sorry, left hand. And is that Fleischer? Yeah. Yeah. I won't get that far, but okay. <laughs> okay. Part of it. Yeah, because I'll want to update that still, too. Darrell up to 11th, and uh, John Andretti. John Andretti 15th after banging that car up. Pretty good run. Coming up next on CBS, final round coverage of the Buick Classic from Westchester Country Club in Rye, New York. Entering the final round today, Jim Furyk, J.P. Hayes, Kevin Sutherland, Bruce Fleischer, Bob Sway, Jesper Partovic atop the leaderboard. Here in Michigan, Jeff Gordon on top of the leaderboard by 1.78 seconds. Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, the pole sitter. Rusty Wallace, Jerry Mayfield, Wally Dollenbach, and Joe Nemechek are the top ten. Mike Joy with Ned Jarrett and Buddy Baker, Ken Squire and down along Pit Road, Dick Berger and Ralph Shaheen, and Bill Stevens today. And that yellow car, you could just see it just a second ago, that was Darrell Walker. He fought his way all the way up to 11th place here, so he's on the move. Darrell Walter in what may be the September of his Winston Cup career. Well, it might be the November, but Walter is been rejuvenated by hopping into Dale Earnhardt's car in relief of the injured Steve Park. Park hopes to return to the circuit at the Brickyard the first weekend in August. He expect to test some maybe uh, in July. I believe that he's going to test there. The race in Indianapolis at the Brickyard is, of course, in the uh, early part of August. A lot of side-to-side -side racing still going on, buddy. Oh, it is that. You can see it. these guys. You don't have to be fighting for the lead to have a great race. Uh, back in the back, these guys take these uh, positions just as importantly as the guy leading the race. So when there's great action like this, it's good to see. Teammates side-by-side, -side, Jeremy Mayfield underneath Rusty Wallace. That is for seventh and eighth. Wallace was one of the most outspoken critic of multi-car teams and was quite a holdout. But when Roger Penske saw the opportunity to merge with Michael Crenifus with this second team and 29-year-old Jeremy Mayfield, Wallace in this week's Detroit News said, I don't know how I could have been that stubborn for so long. He says it's been <laughs> tremendous. It's been a great asset to both Jeremy and Rusty to have this partnership. And it appears to be an advantage. They're sitting up there atop the point standings and had very consistent years. Neither of them have won so far this year, but both of them have been close. Well, they better get underway there. Wally Dollenbach is running back. You can see him in the 50 car there. He's caught Rusty Wallace. Now, Wally Dollenbach is doing a great job in the 50 car today. Well, like you said, buddy, not having a regular ride may be something to the way he's pushing that button. Ned, look at this. The car that won the race last year, the 28 there, Kenny Irwin Jr. driving it this year, just got lapped by Jeff Gordon. Irwin, nonetheless, the top rookie on the tour so far this year. He and Kevin LePage have been the rookie of the race each six times in this young season. Dick Irwin. Well, Jeff Gordon has got an interesting potential pit strategy for this event. We've had three long practice sessions, the most important of which was yesterday afternoon. And in that practice session, he did some very strange things with tires, some things I've never seen before. They just changed left side tires, put on some brand new ones, took them off, put on some stuck left side tires, left the rest of the car alone. So this morning I asked Ray Everham, what's that all about? Are you guys getting set up to maybe do a two-tire change late when everybody else does? of four he looked at me and said dick did we practice with just two tires on the left side and then change them uh these guys are definitely up to some treachery <laughs> let's see how that all plays out at the end of the race 
This is one of the few Winston Cup tracks where Jeff Gordon has not won. Yeah. Jeremy Mayfield there in the 12, right around the base of the racetrack, right around the white line, around the corner there, taking a very low line, picking up position after position. That car is on the move. If you have a car that'll work down there, I agree with you, buddy. I think that's the fastest way around the racetrack. Mark Martin has been running that groove all day, and he's coming. Actually, Mark is gaining a little bit on the leader. He has cut about a second off Jeff Gordon's lead, but he was almost seven seconds behind when he came out of the pits, and he's now just about six seconds behind. Pulling up on Chad Little. Check with Cat. Complete. 132 remaining as you watch Chad Little around Jeff Gordon. Consider this. Average speed thus far stays at 177 miles an hour. No caution to date. The race record, Rusty Wallace, 1996, at 166.033. There were two cautions that year when Wallace beat Labonte for a total of eight laps. But right now, we're on a record pace with Jeff Gordon showing the way, although the tractor's going around the outside, Mike, and going by him. Chad Little hung on to the lead lap. Exactly right. I've just found the first flaw in the uh, Jeff Gordon car. He cannot run under a car in the middle part of the corner there. You can see him lose the back of the car as he was trying to get by Chad Little. Chad Little fought back on the outside. Staying in that lead lap is very important. Chad Little is doing what you have to do out there right now, and that makes it very tough on Gordon to get by. He's in 24th position, Chad Little is. That graphic there showed him a lap down, but he got back on the lead lap. Now Gordon dips down to the inside, oh, and drives her hard to the left, and makes the pass. What he did there, he set him up awfully well going into the corner. Chad Little pushed in the center part of the corner, but here he comes back trying to stay in that lead lap. Three top ten finishes for Little this year. Sixth at California. Seventh at Daytona. Tenth at Las Vegas. Didn't know that track could run that fast, did you? <laughs> wow, I tell you what. He must have rattled his cage when he got up there beside him. Ch Chad Little's doing a great job right now. Well, like back behind them. Here's Bill Elliott and Dale Jarrett. Now, they're now 3.9 seconds behind Jeff Gordon. But, Ned, are they battling, or are they trying to work together to get back to Gordon? Well, uh, Jarrett has just gradually run down Elliott. Of course, we've already established that Elliott only took on two tires, and so his car is not quite as fast. I think that was good strategy because, you know, he hasn't lost that much. He's still in second place. So I think that was very good strategy on the part of, of uh, Mike Beam and the, the McDonald's crew. Ralph Shaheen. Well, Mike, one of the reasons for that is the adjustments that Todd Carrick made to the 88 car, and it was all with air pressure. They put one pound on uh, of the, uh, they took one pound out, I should say, of the left rear and put one pound in the right rear to help open up the split. He takes second place, Ralph, as they come past start finish. Dale Jarrett rolls up into second. Bill Elliott tacks right on with him. But coming into that picture, picture pretty quickly is going to be Mark Martin. Mark is really, he has come from about three seconds behind these two drivers and has run them down with hand right. There he is, right there in the sixth car. Mark Martin is the fastest car on the racetrack right now. Actually, he is gaining on Jeff Gordon. Earlier in the race, he had a very low line through the corner. Let's look at him as he takes the very bottom part of the racetrack. You see the white line, that's the divider there. Boy, he is a quick guy. Look at this. Fastest car on the racetrack by far. 178 miles an hour now. From our Babylon in-car camera, you saw Martin dive underneath Bill Elliott, slide back up the racetrack behind Dale Jarrett, puts him into third place. There's only been one caution-free race as Mark Martin goes to second place here. 1973, Jason won, averaging 153.4 miles per hour caution free boy this is getting more look more like the race in Fontana that uh, Mark Martin just dominated out there he's got that car hooked up right now and he gets up to Jeff Gordon I think we're going to see one whale of a race for the lead Bill Stevens well the crew chief for Bill Elliott Joe Garoni has not had a lot to smile about this year but this morning in the garages he was radiant and I asked him why he said Bill really likes this car. It's the same car they ran in Dover, and ever since it came off the truck, they haven't had to put many fingerprints on it. Remember last year, Bill started 26th and finished second. He's presently running fourth. War, or rather, Jeff Burton is the fifth place car. Ward Burton's Pontiac is sixth. Jeremy Mayfield is seventh. Wally Dollenbach eighth. Rusty Wallace, Joe Nemechek, your top ten. 
Then Darrell Walter, Bernie Irvin, Jimmy Spencer, Bobby Labonte, and John Andretti, the top 15. Terry Labonte, Michael Walter, Bobby Hamilton, Sterling Marlin, and Dale Earnhardt, the top 20. CBS Sports live coverage of the Michigan 400 will continue after this. No guessing. I didn't see it. I promise. Just a full page font for Pepsi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. We need to show Waltrip too. That people at home will love that. Yes, not the answer. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. Tune in for a network television first. Winston Cup racing in prime time. The Pepsi 400 at Daytona. Saturday night, the 4th of July. Fireworks are at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on CBS Sports. Nobody covers NASCAR like CBS Sports Line. Get the latest news and in-depth columns, plus updated standing, video highlights, and more. Get on the fast track at cbs.sportsline.com. Jeff Gordon continues to lead as we bring you our AFLAC trivia question. Who was the last driver to win the Michigan 400 and the Winston Cup title in the same year? I don't know. I have to think about that one. Well, Ned, there wasn't a Michigan 400 when you won the no, championship. So it couldn't have been me. Buddy won this race, but not the title. You got it. Hmm. We're going to Daytona under the lights, buddy, and, and you had a chance to test there last week. What's it like? I'll tell you what. If there's a way to explain it, if you were a jeweler, it would be the diamond. It's beautiful. I'm telling you, I, I can see much better at night there than I could in the daytime. And testing, it was much cooler. I'm sure the fans are going to love it. And it's going to make a spectacular race for CBS. We've seen the night racing at Richmond last weekend on the three-quarter mile track. We've seen it at Charlotte on a mile and a half track, but never on a track as big as the Daytona International Speedway. That has to be spectacular. Well, while we're talking about that, it was almost 100 degrees in the daytime there, cooled down into the 70s at night. It makes for the, the drivers will be much more uh, alert. I think it'll make for a better race, and I know the people enjoy it more. We look forward to it Saturday night, 4th of July. Here's a race for 15th position. Terry Labonte in the middle of this. In the five. Michael Waltrip's 21. And we're above race record pace. Set two years ago. Caution free thus far in the Michigan 400 on CBS. Jeff Gordon now with a 4.2 second lead. And as Rich Bickle moved around Kyle Petty there. Mark Martin in second. Dale Jarrett in third. Bill Elliott fourth. Jeff Burton in fifth. Four Fords chasing the Chevrolet of Gordon. And Ricky Rudd has gone a lap down now. He is running in 23rd position. 
So Gordon has put him a lap down. The next driver will be Jeff Bodine that uh, is on the lead lap. And that Rudd going a lap down is a bit of a surprise, Ned. He practiced well. And I think we're all pulling for Ricky Rudd to keep his streak intact 15 consecutive seasons in victory lane at least once. And uh, many folks after practice thought this could have been the day. Yeah, I thought he would have a better run than he's having. Here's, here is Gordon now going by. Jeff Bodine putting him a lap down. Showing you where he is really, really strong. In the center part of the corner, Jeff Gordon was just a rocket ship then. Down the straightaway, he does not have that much advantage over the other cars. But when he gets in the corner, the 24 of Gordon is just awesome. And he really liked to be able to make the pass the way he did there on Jeff Bodine. That one's on the outside. You mentioned a moment earlier about when he gets down on the inside of the car. And he's down on the inside of Schrader here, putting him a lap down. It seemed to work okay. Let's ride with the Phillips onboard cam with Jeff Bodine and negotiate this traffic. And now Gordon pulls up right up on Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt fights back, but I don't think he has. Oh, you can see the car lose grip there as he started out of the corner. Earnhardt got sideways a little bit. Here, you can see right now that Kenny Schrader in the 33 fights back to keep from going a lap down also. Well, he had been passed, and uh, he, he saw an opportunity there to get back on the lead lap, and he took that opportunity, and he is momentarily, at least, back on the lead lap. Well, let's see if Schrader can hold the bottom of the racetrack with that push. Another car's alongside Gordon. He's got a battle yet again. Here comes Bodine to get back on the lead lap. Ned, that's what I was telling you. He's got a little arrow problem there when he gets around other traffic. Right out by himself, he's very, very dominant. But he gets into heavy traffic. He does not have the grip in the corners that he needs to have. Gordon up in the high lane behind Earnhardt. Squeeze is just in front of Jeff Bodine. And now Gordon gets down on the inside. Let's see if he can hold it going into the turn. Well, His he, car has been a little bit loose there, buddy. He's got a tough man on the outside, but Earnhardt's car moves up the racetrack right there. Gordon makes the pass. Ralph Shaheen. Well, Mike Dale Earnhardt might be having a tough week behind the wheel, but he's had a pretty good day behind the desk. He just recently signed up a new driver for five years with a five-year option. That's a pretty heavy deal. He must have had a lot of power on that guy. It was his son, Dale Earnhardt Jr., signed him up for 10 more years. First contract he's had with his dad. Guys, while Jeff Gordon is racing all this traffic here, he's losing that lead that he has. Mark Martin has cut it down to less than two seconds, about one and three-quarter seconds now. And that's the least lead that Gordon has had under green since well before the pit stop. We've been caution-free here at Michigan. We're closing in very quickly on halfway. 86 of 200 laps complete. Jeff Gordon has led the most of them. Does that need or what be able to ride with Mark Martin as he's catching Jeff Gordon just in front of him up there in the 24? Mark Martin taking a very, very low line going in the middle part of the corner there. You can see his car is really sticking well. Go back to Ralph. Mike, you've been talking about the tires on Mark Martin. Well, here's what they did to them on that last pit stop. They adjusted the air pressure. They went up one pound on the right front and down one pound on the right rear. But what's even more important is the crew said we could have gone at least another four laps before we needed to pit. They said if this race stays green, it's ours. Mark Martin was on pit road at lap 50. So, Ned, the, the outside of that fuel stop window at 54 laps that seems to be that's about as big as that window will get yeah i think so uh, here today mike especially at the speeds that they're running they're burning a lot of fuel but it's uh, interesting that we see as many cars that went that 50 laps as as we did but mark martin had already started conserving fuel because he went an extra lap longer than anyone else so he has a two mile advantage if he does that all the way it could be big at the end of the race here is the progression of the interval over the last five laps. And you saw as Jeff Gordon had to battle Jeff Bodine, Dale Earnhardt, and Kenny Schrader, his lead evaporated. And Darrell Walter. He and Joe Nemechek have been in 10th and 11th place, just like that, since the pit stop. Darrell Walker is driving his heart out. The number one car, the yellow one there, just behind Nemechek, the 42. You can see he has that car handling very well. Good low line through the corner. Faster through the center part of the corner as they head towards the back straightaway. Now, these guys are about two-thirds of a lap behind Jeff Gordon, about 27 seconds behind, but having a great race amongst themselves back there. Just ahead is Rusty Wallace, the ninth-place car, and behind them in 12th place, Ernie Irvin. There's Rusty whose car does not appear to be as strong as it was 
in the first green flag run. Wallace is in ninth place. And Mike, we've documented that Morgan Shepard had taken his car into the garage area. He's now bringing it out of the garage area. There he is coming out of the garage area. Morgan Shepard, his first ride in this Tavola Brothers car, coming back out. Dick Bergman. Well, Mike, the reason that Rusty Wallace's car is not as strong as it was early on is the car is loose. Back end is trying to come around. And unfortunately, it is so loose that they're talking about putting a spring rubber in the front end of the car. If they have to make a pit stop under green and put that spring rubber in, it is going to be very, very costly. Not so bad under caution, but they don't have the time to do it and do it quickly under a green flag pit stop. Wallace is ninth, Dick, behind Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, and Bill Elliott. The Burton brothers, Jerry Mayfield and Wally Dollaback. You're watching from Roger Penske's suite along Pitt Road here at Michigan Speedway. CBS coverage continues after this message and a word from your local station. We need to establish really that, that Gordon has pulled okay. away now. That's okay. He's pulled away by a second. See, uh, Mark got in that same traffic. And uh, I don't know. 21. Looks, you're like looking at 42. In. No, no, no. You look at the no, no, look, no. look at here. See, it was down yeah. to 1.75. Okay. Yeah. What? Well, I'm sorry, buddy. What? But when they give me that card, I gotta go. What's that? When she give me the card. I don't know. Oh, what okay. You're talking That's, about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Was that supposed to? No, 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 no. <laughs> and, uh, all right, pit stops are beginning. Who was the guy that did that? I'll give you a hint. He's, he's won Bill this Elliott. race twice. And did Dale Earnhardt so, uh, Okay. It was a hint. It was only a hint. I did not. We can. I, I mean, now that's oh, my. even more than what they're talking about. Oh. Hey, here comes Daryl around Nemechek. Go, Daryl. Turn one. We can talk about Daryl, too. Yeah. Yes, Bob. Okay. Hey, also, oh, I can't, you're, I, also, uh, it's flag day. The top of the grandstand is all American flags. Fish. In celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary, CBS sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. And by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. 94 laps, Michael Waltrip and Dick Trickle have begun the second round of green flag pit stops. Jeff Gordon leads Mark Martin and Dale Jarrett. 2.4 second lead. So he's built up a little bit, Mike, from when he, uh, Mark Martin had closed it down to one and three quarters of a second. But now that Gordon got out of that traffic, he's back in some traffic right now, putting a lap on Brett Bodine. But that uh, he's been able to stretch it out a little bit since then. Here's the answer to our Aflac trivia question. What drivers won the Michigan 400 and the Winston Cup in the same season? I'll give you a hint. He's won this race twice. Well, let's see. I'd say it's either going to be Bill Elliott or Dale Earnhardt. It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Elliott's won this race probably more than that, so I don't know. There it is. Dale, Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt okay. 1990. Yep. I knew that all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> Pit stops at the ready. That's Bill Elliott's pit. Joe Garoni up on pit wall. There's Joe Nemechek's pit. Nemechek and Darrell Walter locked up in a big battle. Back for 10th spot. Now, Mike, Bill Elliott has already gone farther on this 
run than he did on the first one. He stopped on the 47th lap the first time, and now he has gone 50 laps since he made his pit stop. Ernie Irvin in 36, moving past Rusty Wallace. And in front of all these guys, Darren Walter just went up there and blew by everybody as Jimmy Spencer in the 23 moves in on Rusty Wallace. Rusty's not handling well at all. Losing position after position right now. Full sitter Ward Burton is on pit road. He surrenders fifth place as our Tabasco camp. And Ralph is there. And Mike, he came in awfully slow for one reason. He was out of gas as he came down pit road. He had just enough speed to coast, coast in. So they got the car fired back up as Wayne Shaw gets more fuel and then it dies again. Now it fires up again. It's still not ticking. They're spraying the ether down into the carburetor, trying to get it to start. They're going to push him now. This is why it's so costly to make sure you get your fuel gets just right. Finally, they get him started on a very costly stop, Dick Burkert. Earnhardt in for his second pit stop. Chocolate Myers with a tank in. We've already had one in. They're going to try to adjust this car, get a little more speed out of it so he can maybe get his lap back. 18.91 for Earnhardt. He is taking pit stop before some of the guys with better mileage. That could cost him later. Ward Burton's stop was 28 seconds. Bill Elliott is in. The fourth place car on pit road. Elliott's Ford. He ran 51 laps this time. Bill Stevens. Right now, Bill Elliott is in a critical pit stop. The tire carrier and the tire changer in the back are new men. Their first day on the job. Joe Garoni told me they've been losing a second or two in the pit previous races this year. It's very important for them to get Bill in and get Bill out so they don't lose too much track position. Four tires and fuel. And look at that. On the rear tire, a little bit of a hang-up. They finally get it onto the car. But that's going to cost them just what Joe didn't want. 26 seconds for Bill Elliott. And it'll be the halfway point when Jeff Gordon returns the next time around. He'll probably stay out there and collect that bonus that goes along with leading at the halfway point, which is $10,000. Here's one of the Petsky cars on pit road. This is Mayfield, the Winston Cup point leader. And Mayfield gives up sixth place to make his second stop of the day. We've been caution free. Now it's feeding time. Nima checks in, Rusty Wallace is in. Sterling Marlin and Terry Labonte. Dick? Mayfield's engine sounds like it is right on the edge of running out of fuel. They just got the can in the back with enough fuel in it, and Mayfield was fine. Rusty Wallace, his teammate, meanwhile, pits right behind Mayfield. His engine is fine. Mayfield's engine stalled again. They do have the fuel to it. Mayfield with a slower stop than would be normal. Wallace, four tire stop, as did Mayfield. 19.1 on Mayfield. They are packing every gallon of gas in they can. Rusty, lap 100, that's halfway. He's got two stops done. Wallace's stop, 18.2. Kenny Irwin on pit road. Kyle Petty, Rick Bass, Jerry Nadu. And the leaders coming in. Jeff Gordon coming in the pits. So is Jeff Green and John Andretti. And Jeff Gordon did stay out there and get that halfway bonus. Dick Bergeron. Uh, Gordon's crew is more experienced at this than just about anybody else. They consistently cut 17-second pit stops under green flag. That is extraordinarily important. These guys come in on Sunday only. They don't work on the car during the week. They practice these pit stops. And look at that. 16-5. That's what you get for practicing pit stops every night of the week. That's world class. Robert Presley, Johnny Benson, Steve Grissom. Bobby Hamilton, Ernie Irvin, Jimmy Spencer, Kevin LePage, all on pit road. Dale, Dale Jarrett, Jarrett down pit road, and so is Kenny Schrader. Mark Martin still staying out there, so he's the leader of the race right now. Jarrett gives up second place to make his pit stop. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, they bring Dale Jarrett in and gas man Steve Allen, the size of an NFL linebacker, jumps over a four-foot wall and carries an 80-pound can of gas with him. They change all four tires. They put one round in the left rear. They've got a full fuel, and they are back underway. Wally Dollenbach makes his stop. Kevin LePage exits the pit. Chad Little comes in, and Mike Skinner second round of green flag pit stops. We've been caution-free thus far today. 
Buddy, what's it mean when you've got to run 200 miles without so much as a caution flag to kind of shake things loose? Well, I tell you what, I'm impressed with Mark Martin there. You can see right now it looks like he may be slowing this time by, but he's stretching his fuel mileage, staying out another lap as he comes down the front straightaway with Jeff Gordon just behind him there. I tell you what, that could be huge later on. Well, gas mileage king of NASCAR, Darrell Waltrip, is on pit road. As is Bobby Labonte. And Jeff Gordon moves up past Mark Martin, Bill. Darrell Waltra just about finishing his pit stop. Only two tires and the fuel. This should be a quickie, and he's out. Playing for track position? I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I would say definitely they're, they're playing for track position. Now, when we saw Jeff Gordon, as we see Darrell come out of the pits, we saw Jeff Gordon move around Mark Martin. That put him back on the lead lap. Now Mark Martin is coming into the pit, so that's going to put a lot of cars back on the lead lap once he makes his pit stop and he's coming down pit road as we ride with him. 55 miles an hour is the pit road speed today. And when he gets to a halt, Dennis Ritchie, Jimmy Ellis, Daryl Morrow, Shane Parker, Mike Ayer, Chris Dana, and Doug Newell will service that car for Mark Martin. Jimmy Fennick, new crew chief this year. Ralph? Mike, they're also going to put one pound out of the left front as they go to work on the right side. This time down, Mark Martin was out of gas. So he pits on lap 104, but it was just a little too long. The crew thought they might have been able to go to lap 106. And remember, it's not how much fuel you put in the car, but how much fuel you can pick up. They put four tires on him as well, and he is back out. Mark Martin ran 53 laps on that tank of fuel. This will hand the lead back to Jeff Gordon. Just ahead of Michael Walter. Now Martin getting his speed up coming out of turn two as Dale Jarrett comes off of turn two. It's uh, going to be close. I expect uh, Jarrett with the speed up, he'll probably pass him going into turn three. But they're both going to be pretty far behind. What? No, he did not pass him. Jeff, uh, Mark Martin stayed stayed in front of Dale Jarrett, so he's in second, Jarrett in third. A 16.5 pit stop there by Jeff Gordon. It's almost a full straightaway back to second place car there. What a great stop by Jeff Gordon's group. Battle for fourth right here. Bill Elliott has it. Jeff Burton in car number 99 wants it. And Rich Bickle on the outside, and Cale Yarbrough's number 98 played the spoiler. It was a Mercury Cyclone spoiler that Cale Yarborough drove to the first NASCAR win here. 1969, the only 500-mile race at this track. Kale honored his three race ceremonies today. Moving past Brett Bodine in the 11th. That was Elliott. Brett Bodine is being shown three laps down in 34th position. And here's Kenny Wallace in the pits. This would be a scheduled stop. Wallace made two stops, lap 49 and lap 52. So this would be a scheduled stop for him. There are only 14 cars being shown on the lead lap. As Jeff Gordon is, boy, he is putting some great race cars in the lap down with the lap speeds he's running here. Behind Gordon, Mark Martin second, Dale Jarrett third, Bill Elliott, Jeff Burton is your top five, Jeremy Mayfield, Cole Sitter Ward, Burton, Wally Dallenbach, Joe Nemechek, Jimmy Spencer, Sterling Marlin, Darrell Walter, Rusty Wallace, and Bobby Labonte are the lead lap cars. This car is 21st. Two laps down, the number three of Dale Earnhardt. He's battling Jeff Bodine, excuse me, one lap down, 21st a lap down. Earnhardt and Bodine, as you watch from the Phillips cam on Bodine's car. I can see they have DJ's car where it'll turn to the bottom of the racetrack. Dale Jarrett, you can see him go right by Bodine as he started the, off the corner there. But with fresh tires, that would help him to do that, buddy. And after the tires get hot, it'd be interesting to see if he can still do that. But you're right, he's able to keep it lower on the racetrack than he was earlier. Tracking Robert Presley around this D-shaped front. They call it a straightaway. There's that nice gentle arc to it. They designed the track this way so that nobody would have to look through the race fan sitting next to them. So they round out the straightaway, and it makes a great view for the fans here. Jeff Gordon continues to lead the Michigan 400. We'll be right back.
Gordon just put Rusty a lap down. Wow. Wow. Qualified third and already one down. <clears throat> mm. Remember what we were talking about, Kevin LePage? He's three laps down, yeah. 37. Mm. That's a shame. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton off the pace. Is that the four? A lot of smoke. Turn three. Ooh. Might be a nice time to see the. Might be a. You know what? Uh, I think it's in the groove too. <laughs> I bet it is. Oh, pointing to oh, it. Right oh, right front. Right front. Oh. The car. Hmm. Got in the. No marks. Yes. Yes. This CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Goodyear. Innovators of run flat technology. After 112 laps, 224 miles, 176 miles left to go. We've had four different leaders. The lead has been swapped six times, and it is a record-breaking 173 mile an hour average. Rusty Wallace has set the record two years ago at 166. It's being shattered big time by Jeff Gordon, who has never won this race. This is his sixth start in it, and he's looking very strong at the present time. As you see him continue to try and lap automobiles out here. Meanwhile, let's go to pit road. You see the number four in, and that one looks a little different than it did a few moments ago. Mike? Ken, there was a lot of smoke from the right front of Bobby Hamilton's car. He pulled in. We thought it might be a tire, but uh, it's an oil line. You can see oil all down the right side of that car. As one of the crewmen goes to try to wipe it dry, and they try to get Hamilton back out there. There's Bobby Labonte in the 18 moving around Daryl Waltrip and it's time to go because here comes the race leader. Yeah, actually a lap ago Labonte was up beside of Bobby Labonte in the green number 18 but was not able to make the pass. So he's uh, standing here. Daryl about to go a lap down in the one car. Daryl took a gamble on the pit stop a while ago and only took on right side tires. And you can, he's not having like he was just before, but he's fighting back, trying to get back in the lead line. Pulls along just beside Jeff Gordon as they come off turn four. Oh, I saw something flying up in the air on the back straightaway there. I don't know what that was, but it was a piece off one of the cars that was going right down the back straightaway. Daryl Walter. Driving for injured Steve Park in Dale and Teresa Earnhardt's number one. Fighting, trying to stay on the lead lap. But Jeff Gordon is just so strong. Bobby Hamilton's Morgan McClure Chevy repaired. He's back on track. But he'll lose probably two laps on that stop. Jeff Gordon, eight seconds oh, you out think front. Jeff Gordon, he just run over whatever that is. Right here it is on the back straightaway. It's a piece of debris right there. I saw two cars run over it already. You can see it rolling along there. There it is. Whatever it is. That car's, and you see it flipped up? You know, it looks so light in it. It might be, yeah. I don't know what it might be, but I'm sure if it was something NASCAR deemed was hazardous. But caution is coming out. Caution now coming out. And what a break for Bobby Labonte and Jimmy Spencer. Now can Darrell Walker get back in the lead lap? Boy, he's got to hurry. Has the leader taken the caution? 
I don't know if the lay, if the caution came out. I think it did. I think it came out after they had start, crossed the start finish line. Well, they don't. Walker. They don't think so, Ned. Here they come. Yeah, that's what I say. After they crossed yeah. the start finish line, so they're still racing back to the flag, and Jeff will let him go. He'll let him get back on the lead lap. And wonder will they let Rusty Wallace? Now that's an interesting situation. No, Here I comes Walter, so. <laughs> pounding toward the start finish line. Yellow flag in the wind. Gordon looks low. Here comes Rusty. Walter prevails. Wallace does not. Walter drives a Chevrolet. Wallace driving a Ford. Now Plus you, last week, you know, there was a little altercation in Richmond. Well, now, do you think just 70 miles from Detroit with most of the top automaking executives here at the race, Ned, you think that Chevy helping Chevy Ford helping Ford has anything to do here? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Yes. You better believe it. Well, Win on Sunday, sell on Monday is a catchphrase that's still very much alive in Detroit. As these Ford, Chevys, and Pontiacs battle both now, here and in the showroom. Yes, sir. And now this will take away the strategy as far as the fuel mileage, those that were going to have to make an extra pit stop. Now, if it goes green from here on, everybody can make it on one more pit stop after they make pit stops during this caution period. Would anybody gamble on this caution and stay out, having just been in the pits 20 laps ago? I don't think so. I don't uh, either. Yeah, I think no. they'll be coming in. Yeah. They, they, this is a good opportunity for them, too, to make some adjustments that we've come back that you couldn't make under a green flag pit stop. The pits are closed on this first lap of caution. As you listen in on Robin Pemberton, crew chief for Rusty Wallace, who came up just short of getting his lap back from race leader Jeff Gordon. Okay, just plus right one in the right around. Front. That's it. All right, it'll be the second time by, second time by. What Robin's saying is they'll go up a pound of air pressure on the right front, and because Rusty is not on the lead lap, he has to wait till the second four, time around down, right to rear. pit. Leaders are in. Only cars that are on the lead lap, and that's 12 of them, are allowed to pit. Gordon, Martin, Jarrett, the Burton brothers, Elliot Mayfield, Dahlenbach, Nemechek, Bobby Labonte, Spencer, Darrell Waltrip, and here's Dick Berger. Well, if there is such a thing as a leisurely pit stop, you're watching it right now. The Rainbow Warriors are going to adjust the chassis on Jeff Gordon's car, trying to tighten it up a little bit. As incredible as it seems, in 10 starts, he's never won. Finished second here three times, running strong today. Terrell. Four fresh tires and fuel on Mark Martin. That's it. No chassis adjustments. Another great stop by the Roush team. The last time they pitted, it was a 1750 stop, which is a great stop. And they found themselves when they got out on the track eight seconds behind Jeff Gordon. They were questioning NASCAR's radar control on speed on pit road here. This time, they're right where they wanted to be. Bill Stevens? Well, Bill Elliott's pit stop that time went a whole lot better than the previous one, but it was more leisurely, as Dick Bergren said. It was under yellow, and the tire changers in the back did their job flawlessly. They're a lot happier now than they were about 20 minutes ago. 119 laps are complete here in Michigan of the 200 they'll run today. 238 of the 400 miles. There's Rusty's crew. Ready to go to work for the third stop of the day. Two under green, and this the first caution flag opportunity for pit stops today. Twelve cars on the lead lap. Ben Wallace, Marlin, Ernie Irvin, last year's winner, Terry Labonte, and John Andretti among those a lap down. Ken Squire? Well, at the outset of today's program, we talked about how competitive this racing is. Consider this, 43 cars started, and over the first 200 miles, only one retired, that of Morgan Shepard, who had the fastest car here at 182 miles an hour in his 16th start. Morgan, what happened? Well, yesterday, Ken, we uh, had a little ignition problem, and the car was missing. And we changed everything, but we didn't get back out to... Uh, check the car out so uh, we took off date thought we had it all fixed and uh, the car started missing again let's go quickly to dick bergren well rusty wallace is in robin pemberton the crew chief helping on right side tire changes right now it's going to be a four tire change but they're not going to change that spring rubber they're going to try to adjust the car in other ways so they can make this a quicker pit stop than it would be if they changed the spring rubber and they're off in a little over 19 seconds with four tires everyone a lap or more down is now on pit road Dale Earnhardt coming back out. Came across the line in 15th position, one lap down. The Phillips cam on Jeff Bodine's car as he follows Kenny Schrader. 
Aaron Tire. Rolling out after pit stops. That wheel and tire is not lightweight, and those tire changers have to pull that off, and they can't let it roll. They need to set it down firm, and uh, that's a strength move. I mean, that's a power move to, to do that. Not only it's heavy, but it's also very, very hot when you take it off, over 200 degrees. The Budweiser Cam. I keep wanting to say Ricky Craven's car, and of course it is, but today it's Wally Dollenbeck driving for the injured Craven, who hopes to return soon to the Winston Cup circuit. 120 laps were under the first caution flag of the day. No. Nope. Well, you're right. No way. I'm sorry. When when uh, when Jeff Look, did, I've gotten shorter. <laughs> I wasn't blowing you off there when Jeff hit it. I couldn't see from the post what you're pointing at. Oh. So I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, I thought, I don't, well, I don't, if you don't want me to help. No, you. I just I couldn't see it. <laughs> I couldn't see it. I do that to Ned. He don't pay me any attention. <laughs> Gosh. He knows I'm a loose guy. Can I have my cord back here? Thank you. Let's let me entertain you. I will have a I mm. Easy enough for me to tongue wobble. Oh, it's, it's, there's no electricity involved with this no. broadcast. Oh, nice flag day shot, Fish. <laughs> yes, I love it. Bam. It certainly is. Bam. Thank you. I love it. Bam, bam. All right. Ooh, that tickle. Many tracks festoon the top of the grandstand with sponsor flags, but today is Flag Day, and Roger Petsky honors the symbol of our great country, the American flag atop every flagpole of every grandstand here at Michigan Speedway. And one lap, one lap we'll go back to racing here. We've seen the three wide racing, buddy, that we talked about at the top of the show, but how are they going to catch Jeff Gordon? I don't know. I think we're fixing to find out for the first time. Mark Martin does not have a bunch of racetrack to try to catch up on Jeff Gordon. They're nose to tail when they start back. I'm having a great time. I hope everybody out there is. Hey, is this neat or what? And that, Jarrett, if those fours, there have been four of them behind him all day long, if they can team up, can they catch him? Can they do anything with him? Well, drafting plays a, a role here at Michigan, but not like it does at Daytona and at Talladega, where two or three cars can hook up together and run somebody down. Because of the varying lines that we see them race here, the drafting doesn't work as well. It can help you come up off the corner when you get behind somebody else or something like that, pick up a little bit of speed. But as far as just running nose to tail around the track, like we'll see at Daytona on July the 4th under the lights, well, then that's the difference situation how the drafting really comes into play and if you think this is pretty today you wait till you see daytona under the lights here on cbs it is beautiful first prime time network television stock car race saturday night july 4th fireworks the pepsi 400 live here on cbs getting set for the restart with 12 cars on the lead lap watching from the goodyear blimp as they round into turn number three in the 18 degree banking here at Michigan Speedway. There's the spirit of Akron, one of a fleet of blimps that Goodyear has at sporting events around the world for the last 70 years. I had the opportunity to fly that ship one time at Daytona. I tell you what, it, that next to racing is pretty neat. All right, we're about to see if anybody has anything for Jeff Gordon. 
The green flag waves and we're off racing again. Dale Earnhardt tries to get a lap back for the leader and he's not going to make it. Three wide, they stack up behind Earnhardt. Well, this is when things really get touchy and nervous. Look at our three and four wide as you look back at the pack. Those front three cars pull away, but look at them for every other position coming into turn three. Still three wide, back at sixth place. Rusty Wallace right in the middle of that sandwich digging. Bill Elliott up on the outside. Bill Elliott is running in the fourth position. He just can't clear the lap track. He sees those leaders pulling away, and he wants to be up there with them, but he can't do anything because he's boxed in. Funny how nerve-wracking does that get to be in that tight of pack? Uh, no, no trouble. trouble. That's just what we expect on these restarts when these cars double wide like that. That's trickling hard in the wall in 96 right there. Kevin LePage. That may have been Kevin also involved, pulling away. This is Kevin LePage. This is Kyle Petty. Kyle had been off the pace running on seven cylinders, appeared for quite a while and as we raced back to the flag. And nobody's going to get a lap back from Jeff Gordon this time. Earnhardt's coming hard. So was Ernie Irvin. But just too much ground to make up to the leader. Hot Strickland, first ride for Buzz McCall in the Caterpillar Chevy. And it went hard into the wall in turn one. Mike is a very, very wide racetrack, but it does not take very much. Just a little touch and around the car goes. You can see the front of Kevin LePage car there torn up, a flat right front tire on it, trying to make, not lose the lap. He's going to come in the pits, of course, the next time by. LePage started fifth. Six times he's been rookie of the race. Perhaps not today. There's the car of Hutt Strickland sitting there on the, the racetrack. He's moving around inside the car, Ned. Yes, you can see him moving, taking his safety equipment loose. Now that all the cars are slowed down, he wisely sat there until all the cars were slowed down on the racetrack. Safety equipment, also you have uh, wires in there for radio communications, everything. So he's okay, he's moving around in the car and unhooking all the wires. We went caution free for the first 117 laps of this race, and now two cautions within seven laps. Let's see what happened here going into turn one. Well, we know there were a lot of cars that were running very close together going into the turn. And right here is where it starts. A couple of cars make contact, and David Green, um, David Green used to drive this car. It's had Strickland today, and the 91 car ran into the back of someone else who had slowed down. Sterling, And that caused him to spin around. I think LePay's got the back of Sterling Marlin. Ed. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Jerry Nadeau in the 13 there touches the back of uh, the 96 car of Huff Strickland and around the car goes hard into the outside wall on the driver's side, but luckily it hit right on the left corner instead of on the driver's door itself. And the 91 of Kevin LePage hit the car number 77 of Robert Presley, I believe. Right, that's correct. Bit of the aftermath here. See Bobby Hamilton in the yellow number four coming through there, just sort of picking his way through. Buddy, when that happens in front of you, you can slam on that brake. Doesn't have a whole lot of effect, does it? Well, what you have to do is put your hands up in the air and let everybody around you know there's no brake lights on these cars, so you start waving to let the cars. You can see Kevin LePage get in the back of Robert Presley there, spinning him around. But that's what happened. It's like on the freeway. When things start happening, you run out of time to react. He's in the ambulance. Hutt Strickland has walked to the ambulance. He is okay. He'll get a mandatory trip to the infield care center. 126 laps complete. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. ran in the back of Trickle, and that triggered that. I don't know if anybody may have that. But that was ahead of Nadu getting into yeah, that, poor old Hutt. We don't have it, it's no. Well, we should show the damage on Rudd's car. Yep. The, the 10 car. Pam. Oh, hello. 
Hello, everybody. That Kevin LaPay thing happened way after this. Here. No, that's Bill, I Kevin think. Oh, okay, here it is, right here. You can uh, see right I'm there. I'm going to walk up to Ricky Rutt's pit and see what they can say about no. what happened. Okay. Hey, Mike. No. Yeah, Friday. hey, Dick. I've been in uh, the 99 pit for a while. Frankie Stoddard hurt himself on that last oh, green flag pit stop. And He's got a really is pretty thing up there. Right he's there? the front tire changer and the crew chief. And yep, they're running he has the board. dead car. He, yeah, he just yeah. touches the back yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We we need we need yeah. to stop it right where you did, and we identified that that Ricky Rudd in the 10 car right there gets into the back of the 90 car. Yeah. And then the he ran in the back of Chad. See the green car. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you might mention Chad just in yeah, front there because, yeah. yeah, Trickle, did Trickle get into Chad? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. What's the order, Eric? And then if we can sh pick up the 10 car and show the front end damage on his car. There's a lot of it. This is the 10 right car there. right here. Yeah. Yes, please. The front of the 10 car. Okay. See, they've already hit there, Ned. Can we back that up just a little? Can you back it up just a shed, Ted? Okay, is that Spencer in front of them? I don't know. Tim. Okay. I got Bill Engel. on CBS Sports Spectacular, high rollers of the PBA hit the fast lane at the AC Delco Classic. Plus, all-time tennis rivals Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg show they've still got it in the challenge. Coverage begins at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Then on Sunday, it'll be fast times in the Big Easy at the U.S. Outdoor Track and Field Championships, followed by more tennis action in the finals of the challenge. Action begins at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, while we were way on break, we were able to evaluate that accident. See the damage on the front of Ricky Rudd's car here, the car number 10. Now, we're going to take a look at the replay, and we're going to have to see that it happened a little bit different. Okay, right here is Ricky Rudd. Now, these cars up in front, there's Chad Little and Dick Trickle right there as he went into that turn. Now, we move it forward. Those cars have made contact right there. You see Rudd runs into the back of Dick Trickle, and then... The cars behind them, I think apparently the 96 car of Hutch Strickland slowed down, and that's when Nadu got into it. Absolutely. And as so often happens, the cause of that accordion action drives on while the mayhem is behind them. Yep. Happened so many times. Bill Stevens is in Ricky Rudd's pit. And then with his crew chief, Bill Engel. Bill, what did Ricky tell you what happened out there? Uh, Ricky said he went off two over there and everyone started woeing up in front of him. He didn't get he didn't get woed up enough. He got into the 90 car and uh, he said they just started piling up behind him. That's basically all he had said about it. All right, okay. Yeah, everything's okay. Dick Bergman. Well, we hear about drivers running hurt. Right now we've got a crew chief running hurt. Frankie Stoddard, who is the crew chief and front tire changer for Jeff Burton, whacked his elbow, a good one, on the last green flag pit stop. Sunk to the ground, but you're looking better now. Yeah, I got a little bit of color back in my face. Uh, I don't know if I look any better, but I feel a little bit better. You going to be able to continue to change tires today? I think so. Uh, you know, I keep putting a little bit of ice on it. I, I busted some lug nuts here on the pit box a little bit, and uh, it... It felt, I mean, it doesn't feel good. I don't have a lot of control with my right arm, and that's the one I need control with, but it'll, it'll be okay for hopefully two more stops. He's a tough guy, Mike Joy. Thanks, Dick. Takes over 100 people to put on a CBS race telecast. You only see seven of us. But one of the key folks was John Leonard. For 16 years, he innovated mobile announce studios, made speed shot mounts, camera mounts, expandable office trailers, pit communication centers, with whatever he could find on site or at the local hardware store. He was MacGyver long before they had a TV show. John Leonard lost his fight with esophageal cancer and its complications on Wednesday, June 3rd. And our sympathy goes out to his brother, Fran, who works with us here at CBS, and the entire Leonard family. We will miss him. He made quite a difference in our race coverage.
One, two, three, four, five. This is Ken. CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the king of beers. 130 laps, 260 miles complete, just 70 laps remaining. We've had five different leaders. The lead has been swapped eight times, and the speed has dropped down to 154 miles per hour with the second caution of the day with that hard hit by Hutt Strickland. Two cautions, 11 laps thus far, and only one car out of the race. Strickland's more than a rear clip there on that number 96, all torn up in that incident. Glenn Jarrett has said about these multiple crashes like this when they're all bunched up, nobody's immune. You just can't ride around out there saying it's uh, going to be a day when I stay back out of the way. Uh, that's Dale Jarrett. Yeah. If you do, you're going to get lapped. And uh, then you're up there in the front on a restart, and you'll probably get run over. Here they come. Let's see if anybody gets run over on the restart. Here's Mike Joy. Thanks, Ken. Ernie Irvin on the inside with Dale Earnhardt trying to get a lap back from Jeff Gordon. Ernie's got it. The defending champion of this race pulls ahead of Jeff Gordon in turn two. Irvin climbs back on the lead lap. And he knows that, you know, with the cars all bunched up, that you're subject to see some other cars get together. And if they should, you'd be back on the lead lap. Now, a number of lead lap cars, Wally Dolan back, Jimmy Spencer, and Darrell Walter Mark pit stop. Mark Martin goes for the lead under Jeff Gordon coming off of turn four. Can he hold on to it? Boy, he made a sharp left, but he can't hold on to it, buddy. Exactly right. So, uh, the 36 car of Urban up there in front uh, had the draft for the 24 as he come off turn four, and Mark Martin didn't have the muscle to hold on. Martin is second. Dale Jarrett is third. Rusty Wallace looks under Jarrett in the back straightaway. Rusty trying to get back on the lead lap. And Rusty backing up as everyone else is in the top lane. Yeah, he, he didn't get the uh, the line off of turn two when he was under Jarrett that he needed, and Jeff Burton was able to pull on around it too. Here comes Gordon. Back around Ernie Irvin, who again goes one lap down. And Mark Martin unable to follow Gordon past Durbin. Well, I think Irvin knew that his his brain out there in front of Jeff Gordon would be short-lived, but with all those cars bunched up, you know, there's always that possibility you could have a couple of cars get together and have a caution, but it didn't work for it. Down with effort. This track is so wide, it's paved almost six lanes wide. There's plenty of room to race, stay out of each other's way, but they don't use all that room. Well, Mark Martin's using a lot of room as he comes off turn four and goes by Ernie Irvin. Now he has Jeff Gordon inside as they come down the front stretch. Jeremy Mayfield, left side of your screen on that number 12. Sterling Marlin coming up around the outside and Bill Elliott and Ward Burton. Elliott's 94 and the green car at Burton fighting Mayfield for possession. Marlin in the 40 is one lap down. Mayfield is in fifth position. 66 laps to go. One more pit stop. Here's our first plus financial telemetry. Let's see what they're doing now. They were running a little over 200 miles an hour at the very start of the race. 8,500 right there. As they get down near the end of the straightaway, about 8,800 and close to 200 miles an hour. Mayfield ducks under Marlin. Try to bring Ward Burton with him. Bill Elliott looking on. 
fifth, sixth, and seventh place. Battling here. From Ward Burton. We'll look ahead at this same battle. Ward Burton's best finish this season is eight at Talladega. He would eclipse that today. He has a run underneath Jeremy. Almost. See, Jeremy's car get a little loose as he's on the bottom line. They're trying to get in turn one. Elliott makes a move on the outside of the 94 car. Everybody lines up on the outside, and now it is Mayfield getting closed lined in the back straightaway. Especially with these new tires on that outside line, seems to be working. Elliott's car goes high, and here comes Ward Burton down in between them. Ooh, that's close. <laughs> oh, three wide down the front straightaway. Ward, Ward, didn't, Ward didn't hesitate for a moment to stick that thing up there in the middle, did he? He's, he's an aggressive race driver. Joe Nemechek there in the 42 car, the blue one there. Ninth place right now. Yeah, Nemechek's moved up well. Now he's bringing Wally Dolan back with him and Bobby Labonte in the 18 into that battle. And pretty soon, you're going to see Mr. Excitement, Jimmy Spencer, right up with them. Spencer is closing on that group. And Mark Martin trying to close on Jeff Gordon. He, he's been up beside him, had a nose alongside him a couple of times, Mike, but just hasn't been able to pull off the pass. Right here is where Jeff Gordon is absolutely handling the best. Down the straightaways, he's got a great car. I think Mark Martin may be just a little quicker in the center part of the corner. As you see him close in on the back panel there. Take a lower line, the 24, Jeff Gordon goes up a little bit, closes in within a half a car length as they head down the back straightaway. This is for the lead at 62 laps to go. They'll all have to make another pit stop. Gordon is led by as much as four seconds under green. And he has already locked up the bonus for leading the most laps. There's a five-point bonus for leading a lap in NASCAR Winston Cup racing and also a five-point bonus for leading the most laps. And Gordon already has that locked up. Somebody brushed the wall up coming out of turn four. It was Joe Nemechek. There you see Bobby Labonte dive underneath. And Dolan back with him. Nemechek got just a little too high and brushed the wall in that 42. Here's Elliott. Moving on the inside of the 40 car of Sterling Marlin, but he couldn't get the traction he needed. These guys are going at it. <laughs> Buddy, you jump under one of those cars, you go, I think I can. I know I could. And then what happens? Uh-oh. I can't. I can't. As you start off the corner, but these guys are trying every way, every groove around the racetrack. Jeremy Mayfield jumps in between the two cars there to take that spot away from Sterling Marlin, but you can tell right now Jeremy Mayfield's looking all over this racetrack, trying to find some place that his car is a little better than the cars he's racing with. And Mark Martin uh, going right. forward here. He's got a run on him. Uh, I think he may make the pass as they head down into turn three right there, Mike. You can see that Jeff is fighting back on the outside. And you can hear the crowd over the roar of these engines. Ford versus Chevy. Not one person sitting down there, all standing down the front straightaway as Jeff Gordon takes over the lead again. I don't know why they sell seats in the Winston Cup races. Nobody uses them. <laughs> here, Mark's going to try it again, coming off at of turn two. Last time he got up there, couldn't quite do it this time. He'll have to work him again now for a lap or two. Now, you can see the front of Mark Martin's car as he started off turn two just then, kind of going out towards the wall and broke his momentum just a little bit coming off the corner. That's one of the characteristics of the so-called five and five rule this year. NASCAR mandated that the front air balance be five inches off the ground and the spoiler be five inches. And they say that that is one of the characteristics of the car, especially when you get around another car. When it comes off the corner, it has a tendency to pick the front end up just a little bit and won't let it turn the way they would when you're out there running by yourself. The idea was not to make the cars any less safe to drive, but to encourage the ability of that second car to pull out and pass. And to slow the cars a little bit as well. NASCAR looks for, for ways to make competition close and at the same time keeping speeds down to some degree. Jeff Gordon continues to lead Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, and Jeff Burton in the Michigan 400. We'll be right back. Well, 
Morgan's back out. They've been really uh, working the warranty on that car. Okay. So, <laughs> wow, he just said no second. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They keep messing around on this one. He's not coming in, is he? Yeah. Thank you. All right, so this first, then golf, right? Okay. Can you have one more look at the golf? Just sort of. Okay. J.P. Hayes has taken a three-stroke lead from Jim Furyk. Keep the Somewhere. heat on. Okay, thank you. Got it. to think the unthinkable and there's nothing more unthinkable than terrorists spraying an American city with anthrax or botulism. Could it happen? 60 minutes tonight. Followed by Touched by an Angel and the CBS Sunday movie Mel Gibson stars in The Man Without a Face. That's tonight on CBS. At the Buick Classic coming up next final round coverage from Westchester Country Club in Rye, New York where J.P. Hayes has taken a three-stroke lead over Jim Furyk. Kevin Sutherland and Tom Lehman. Final round coverage next here on CBS. Jeff Gordon has a tenuous lead on Mark Martin. It's about, it's about a car length. Dale Jarrett, Jeff and Ward Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, Bobby Labonte, and Bill Elliott. Here Mark's got him a run coming off a of turn two again, but he couldn't mount enough of a run to get it beside him, Gordon. I think what Mark Martin's doing right now, I think he's looking for weak places for Jeff Gordon. He, he found that he can run a little bit lower, make Jeff use a little bit wider line, and close in just a little bit coming out of the corners on him. But he hadn't yet figured out how to muster enough stuff to get in the lead. Among Martin's victories, Las Vegas and Texas this year, and the California Speedway, a track patterned like Michigan, but doesn't drive quite the same way as Michigan does, buddy. No, the uh, banking's just a little bit different, uh, according to Mark Martin. I talked to him yesterday, and he said, as he pulls side by side, as they try to make a pass down the back straightaway, Mark Martin wants that lead as they head into turn three. He's going to get it, if only by a fender, but Gordon stops it in there. Well, he hadn't done it yet. You <laughs> see Mark fighting back on the bottom side. Has about a fender lead, and here comes Gordon back again. Gordon will have that momentum coming off the turn, and he'll beat Martin back to the line, just barely. We've seen a lot of last laps just like that one here at Michigan, and oftentimes the driver on the outside will prevail. They may have touched right there at turn one. They might have traded a little paint. They were awfully close. Gordon still staying up high. And Gordon and Martin getting into the room. I'm surprised Martin didn't slip up in front of him. Yeah, I'd have been, I don't believe I'd have had to move over just a little bit. Maybe hit his brakes. Gordon again hard into turn three. And this time, Martin by almost a full car length on the bottom. Uh, Coming off here he comes and up. he's got it. Mark Martin puts the board in the win, looking for his fourth win of the season, as is Gordon. Martin the point. At least half of this crowd that is here today. Look, everybody's got a hat waving it right now. We like Mark Martin, I guarantee you. Crowd back on their feet again. Mark Martin is taking the lead here. Now we'll see if Gordon can mount a charge on him. Ralph? Well, we're here with crew chief Jimmy Fennick. Jimmy, it took you a lot of tries, but finally you got the lead. What made the difference that time? Uh, we've been pretty good all day. You know, we just... Uh, we cut it kind of close on gas, and he had a coast down pit road, and that cost us some positions, but uh, we're pretty good. You know, we're still a little bit too tight. 
How about a few miles to the finish now? Can you beat him on that? No, we'll all have to stop. Jimmy Bennett getting ready to try to bring his car home to victory lane. One more pit stop to come. In the pre-race ceremony, the track announcer asked for how many for Ford, how many for Chevy, and there were a lot more Chevy fans, but you could hear the cheer up here when Mark Martin took the lead from Jeff Gordon. By half a second, Mark Martin traveling forward as the class of the field over Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett. We'll be right back. Yep. Okay. And I can see that. I don't have to ask. Him. Right. Okay. Dale Jarrett and uh, Burton both are, are moving up on the lead guard. Dale Jarrett, especially. Wow, that's hard. Oh. Yeah, he wants about two and a half seconds behind. He's cut it down to 1.8 now. Lap 175, 175. You know, Ward Burton is having a really strong race here in fifth place, first to the Pontiacs. Who is that race in Burton like this? Oh, it's Morgan. Morgan. I guess they found that cylinder he lost. He's, he's going to get points. him five. If they're not careful, they'll get more now. No, that's all the bonus points. No, I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. Who led right? the halfway lap, Gordon? Yeah. Thank you. Boy, boy. Yeah, he's. Oh! Wallace almost went out of here just now. Nobody covers NASCAR like CBS Sportsline. Latest news and in-depth columns from the track. Updated standings, video highlights, and more at cbs.sportsline.com. One of America's most enduring corporate images, the Goodyear blimp floats above, providing us with aerial views of Michigan Speedway, the spirit of Akron, based near Akron, Ohio. 155 laps. 45 to go, one pit stop remains. Mike, you can see the six there. Mark Martin has broken out, and he's in clear air. He built up a pretty good lead. Jeff Gordon has another problem. Dale Jarrett has run him down, and now there's less than one car left as they start down the front straightaway. And you saw Gordon wave Jarrett to the inside. We watched from the Ford Quality Care Camp. Gordon had a hand in the air pointing to the inside. And he just let him go. Gordon's car not as good as it was earlier. Jeff Gordon led the halfway lap today. The last time a driver won this race while leading at halfway, 1992, Davey Allison. I think Jeff Gordon might have looked in the mirror and realized that the 88 car was coming real fast and maybe he can use the draft to maybe run Mark Martin back down and get back in the fray here. But right now it looks like the two Fords are much quicker than Jeff in the corner. Unscheduled pit stop for Ricky Rudd. And Ricky had made a pit stop during that last caution after we talked to his crew chief, Bill Engel, and said nothing was wrong with the car after that little bump down in uh, turn one and two. But you wonder if maybe if might have pushed the radiator back a little bit or something. I don't know. For more on Dale Jarrett, here's Ralph. Now, Mike, I'm standing by with Todd Perry, crew chief for Dale Jarrett. Todd, you reeled in Jeff Gordon pretty quick. Do you have enough for the leader? Well, I hope so. You know, the car hadn't been right all day long. We've been working on it every stop. Um, just missed it a little bit, but it's not too bad. Hopefully, uh, the set of tires we got in this uh, last stop we make, we can get it tuned up and uh, maybe have a shot at the lead. What time do you think of making that stop? Probably around 174, 175, somewhere in there, 25 to go. I'd like to say hey to Debbie and Chandler and Tyler home. 
Mike, that's exactly when Mark Martin's crew is planning on stopping as well. Well, folks, plan your refrigerator breaks now. Pit stops, lap 174.5. <laughs> that's about uh, 18 laps from now. That lead for Mark Martin has stabilized now. Jarrett was gaining on him until he caught Gordon and passed him, and now Martin's able to stay about the same distance out in front, which is about 1.6 seconds. Paul Ricky Rutt's car still sits on pit road with the hood up. The 1993 winner will not have a strong finish today. Morgan Shepard back out on the racetrack. They must have found that cylinder Morgan dropped because he's been running <laughs> at competitive speed. And right now he's one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. As a matter of fact, he passed Jeff Burton, who is running in fourth place, and just pulled away from him. And so Morgan, yeah, he's not running on seven cylinders. Morgan is running behind Jeff Gordon there by about uh, 100 yards or so. <laughs> Bill Stevens. Bill Engel, the crew chief for Ricky Rudd, said the throttle linkage was hung up. They're putting the air cleaner back on the car that just fired up a moment ago, but it took a while to fix. It was a nasty little problem here that was aggravating, but it looks as if, at least at this point, they've got it straightened out. There are very few ways to gain time on this racetrack to the leader. A lot of ways to lose them. Mark Martin, number six, the Jack Roush Ford. Out in front now by a second and a half over the Ford of Dale Jarrett from the Robert Yates team that won here last year. Then Jeff Gordon's Chevy, Jeff Burton's Roush Ford, and Ward Burton's Bill Davis Pontiac. Dale, Dale Garrett has closed it just a little bit. Knocked it down to 1.5 seconds. 40 laps to go. CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 continues after this message and a word from your local station. Yeah. It looks like I don't know it. it it's a is there a metal strip along the top of that valence? I want to see what it is. I, I'm not even gonna guess. No. I, I didn't want to show it during the there's one along the bottom of it. Ah. Uh, uh, it needs to be coming at you like coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Sometimes we leave them hanging out the door, don't we? Yep. <clears throat> Didn't we have a lower third about driver who met, led the most laps winning this race seldom and driver winning at halfway hardly well, winning? And that's so far this year. This year, right, yeah. That would play, yeah, too, yeah, right, it would. right about De here. Definitely would play, yeah. What do you call that little strip under there? Yes, sir. You know, it's just a ground clearance thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Rocker panel extension? No, it's... Yeah, probably. I'm, I don't know what... No, they don't. In celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary, CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by First Plus Financial. At First Plus, you don't need equity, you just need a home. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. And by Goodyear, innovators of run-flat technology. Ricky Rudd's tied Ford is back in the race, and Dale Jarrett has a good, strong look at the leader. Here is the battle between Ward Burton, the pole sitter, and Jeremy Mayfield for fifth place. Turn three. This is about the fifth lap that they've been running side by side, and you can see May Mayfield pulled even with him as they come off turn four. Just on the right side over there, Warburton still side by side as they go down the front straight away. Just touching 200 miles an hour. Mayfield completes the pass. Watching the Tabasco cam on Ward Burton's car.
Fifth place for Mayfield now. Sixth for Warren Burton. Bobby Labonte is seventh. Bill Elliott eighth. Wally Dolan back ninth in his first ride for Hendrick Motorsports. Joe Nemechek tenth. Jimmy Spencer and Daryl Walter the lead lap cars. Back to front, front to back. Four laps to go, Ned, as we talk to the top of the show. This race may well be one on pit road, not so much from strategy, but this time it'll be the speed of those pit crews. It'll be the speed of the pit crews, but it could be one by strategy. Will somebody just take on two tires? Will others take on four? You know, we've seen uh, seen that play here already today. Uh, when, Bill Elliott, when Bill Elliott took two tires, and Jeff Gordon took four. Gordon ate up Elliott, yeah. and every crew and spotter here took note. Yes, but but if you know if it's if it's there, they're getting ready on pit road. But if it's near enough to the end of the race, then you know if you can pick up four, five, six seconds that way, you know it might give you enough to to uh, stay out in front. So it'll be interesting to see what the strategy. Well, pit stops are due here in eight to ten laps. So let's take this break on CBS. And we'll come back for these all-important final round of pit stops after this word. And here they start. Boy, I'll tell you, you talk about the importance. Yep. Pit stops, this is it this time. Well, you know, they might not... One, two, three, four, mic check, one. CBS Sports Race Summary is sponsored by Texaco, a world of energy. With 30 laps to go, there have been five leaders in the 30th annual Michigan 400. Lead has changed nine times, the speed down to 156. Not a new record. Two cautions, 11 laps, and we have cars on pit road. Let's go to Dick Bergren. And Jeremy Mayfield is making what should be his final stop. Two tires so far. Will he go for four? Will he stick it out with two? Mayfield pounding the gas in. He goes with two, a little over 12 seconds on that pit stop. Meanwhile, Gordon's crew is on the wall. They're getting ready to pit him. And Mark Martin comes in as well. This is lap 172. Warburton stopped at lap 168. Here are the two leaders, Ralph. They're coming in on lap 172. They had talked about lap 174 or 5. The key here is to get Mark as close to the wall as they can since they're only going to change tires on the right side. Changes Jimmy Ellis in the front and Sean Parker in the rear go to work. They're off. The field is in. Mark Martin is out in just over 9 seconds. But he does not beat Mark Martin down pit road. Well, Martin had a 9-second pit stop. Jeff Gordon was a little over 8 seconds. About 8, 8. eight. 
8.8. Here comes Dale Jarrett in for his final stop. Now the 88 car. Now Dale Jarrett did leave a lap. He came across the start finish line first the last time around. So that's the first time that he has led today. Bill Elliott made his stop at lap 172 as well. Here's Ralph. Well, now they're going to go to work on this car with Dale Jarrett. And the interesting thing here is the crew chief Todd Parrott has to change to carry the tires around. The regular tire carrier having knee surgery. He's working with his team. Pretty good for a couple of old guys that haven't done it in a while. Now, the reason pit stops are earlier than we expected was Ward Burton. Since he felt he was losing touch with the leader, Burton's team thought they would get in early, get their tires, and go. Well, if Burton comes out and he's faster than the cars that are still on the racetrack, Ned, they've got to come in. They can't afford to stay out. No, they can't afford to lose that half a second a lap or whatever it might be that those new tires are gaining for them. And now here comes the 99 car of Jeff Burton. He had taken over the lead, so he's got those five bonus points. Dale Earnhardt, Bobby Labonte all come down Penn Road. Let's go to the pits and route. Well, the crew goes to work on the right side here. They're going to make a chassis adjustment to the 99. They got the right side on a little slow on the back side. Fuel is in. They are underway with a pretty good stop on the 99. But Buddy Parrott is furious, not happy with something. And the crew talking back with him. They're not agreeing on what the adjustment was. We'll see if we can find out. That may move Wally Dolan back into the lead. There's Jeff Gordon. Down the back straight away. Dollaback comes across and the butt cam shows John Andretti just ahead. And they are arguing down there in the pits of Jeff Burton. It's uh, Greg Zipidelli who helped Mike, the closest to the camera, who helped Mike Stefanik to the Bush North Championship last year. And now came down to join Roush Racing. He's talking with uh, Buddy Parrott. And uh, whatever the point of contention is, it's still going. I think Buddy won the argument, whatever it was. <laughs> Nick Rickle makes a stop, so does the 46 for Jeff Green. Jerry Nadeau, Nadeau is in. And here are your leaders. Well, not yet, because we've got some cars that haven't stopped yet. That's true, Ned. Wally Dollaback, Jimmy Spencer, and Darrell Waltrip are staying out on a wing and a prayer, knowing if they stop now, they can't win. But if they stay out, they could catch a caution and catch the rest of this field down. Well, not a lap down, though. No, Since they down. only changed two tires, uh, they'd, uh, they'd still have to come in and they'd come out behind those who have made pit stops. So, you know, it, it's a good gamble. No, no question about that. Wally Dollaback moves past Kevin LePage. A Budweiser camera showing a packed house along this front grandstand in Michigan. Ken Schrader completes his stop. And goes back out, 23 laps, 46 miles to go. Let's get an update from Jeff Burton's pit and route. Now we'll talk to crew chief Buddy Perrin and see if we can find out what happened. Buddy looked like a lot of heated discussion after that pit stop. What happened? Well, we just had a miscommunication. Uh, we only needed one can of gas, and I thought they, were, they had plenty of gas in the car, but it uh, uh, seems like the right rear wheel was trying to spin, and Jack Man was holding up the tire so he could get it tight. So they did the right thing, but I was looking at the fuel, and uh, they were holding up precious seconds. Well, and he sits up high over the pit stall area, gentlemen, so he can't necessarily see what's going on on the other side of the car. That's a pretty efficient pit crew, and I'm sure that they wouldn't drop that car and let him go until everything was done. There is Jeff Burton back at speed, and he is presently shown in seventh place. Wally Dallenbach, first time ride in a Hendrick Motorsports machine, and he leads the Michigan 400. After the, after the cycle is thing. Up. Oh. When you, when you pull that off. Yeah. There, there is no fuel strategy anymore. <laughs> no. And, and Dollaback's in leader in. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. got enough fuel. That's no, no problem. Now it's just a matter of whether Spencer and Daryl fit. Well, they'll have. Well, well, yeah. But see, they stopped. 
they late on that caution. Now. Yeah, 50 is in now. Yeah. But they stopped late on that caution, which gave them an extra four or five laps. And so did, so did Wally. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there I can give you an update on uh, uh, Dollenbeck. All right. Dollenbeck stopped at lap 130. And so did Spencer. There comes Excuse Spencer. me. Waltrip and Spencer at lap 130. Dollenbeck at 129. Spencer in. Now when Darrell stops, we'll have Okay, it's right next door. Right. Hey, Tim, if I could do this walk and talk in the street. But uh, I've, got a, I've got an update on Donald yeah. Jack on their strategy, why they waited they all that. Up in the car. Car. Bergie? Yeah. What's up there? Well, basically, Waltrip right. is having the time of his life. I'll bet. Uh, Viva Las Vegas and Yeehaw coming down the straightaway. He's coming in now, Mike. Well, he's fixing to lose the lap. Darrell's leading, yep. When he makes the stop, he'll be a lap down. Yep. Well, Darrell will be pitting. Mark Martin has just retaken the lead as Jeff Gordon comes up alongside the number one of Darrell Waltrip for second. 31st Winston Cup race that Darrell Waltrip has led in Michigan in his long and storied career. 26 years in Winston Cup racing and he surrenders the lead to make his final pit stop of the day. And he is the last of the lead lap cars to pit. Waltrip was in at the end of the last caution period at lap 130. So he was able to hang out there for 52 laps. You know, this reminds me of Charlotte. Uh, when, when Jeff Gordon has brand new tires, he can run with Mark Martin in the forts, but as the uh, tires get hot, long runs, he loses a little bit of grip in the 24. Right now, he's able to put up a pretty good battle there with the six of Mark Martin. Yeah, he's stayed right away since they came out of the pits, and before they came into the pits, Mark was pulling away from him. Dale Jarrett is gaining on both of them. Right now, he was about two and a half seconds behind. Now, he's only about uh, one and a half seconds behind, so he's picking up a little bit on. We'll want to keep an eye on KGO BW. He took on gas only, I believe, all the rest of the lead lap cars did get tires on that final pit stop. So Walter taking a big gamble with just gas and trying to gain some track position at the finish of this one. For more on Darrell's run today, here's Dick. Well, Mike, he's knocking the fans in the grandstands over with his conversations on the radio. He is having so much fun driving a race car that is running the way he likes it to, fast. A couple of laps ago, he came by the straightaway singing Viva Las Vegas. A couple <laughs> of laps after that, he came by and just hollered, yee-haw! This guy's just having a great time. He loves to go fast, and this is the same car he was fifth with in California. He's a happy guy today. There's hardly a race fan here who doesn't wear a headset or a hearing protector, and most of them are tied in to monitor <laughs> either our telecast, the radio broadcast, or their favorite driver. And Daryl's giving them quite a show today. He is 11th, the next to last car on the lead lap. Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, six tenths of a second back. Dale Jarrett, another six tenths back. Jeff Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, Ward Burton, the pole sitter, Bobby Labonte, Bill Elliott. Joni Imachek, Wally Dollaback, Daryl Waltrip, and Jimmy Spencer, the lead lap cars. We go under the lights. Saturday night fireworks, July 4th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. First time in prime time on network television. Then the Craftsman Truck Series comes to CBS. Saturday, July 4th, that's a 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time start in Milwaukee. We'll go to Nazareth, Pennsylvania, one week later on Sunday, July 12th. And to Pikes Peak in Colorado Springs, July 25th at 1.30. The Pep Boys Indy Racing League is on CBS. June 28th, two weeks from today, we'll be in New Hampshire at 2 o'clock. And at Dover, Delaware, imagine Indy cars on the mile. You'll see that live on CBS. And the leaders are in heavy traffic. Don't know how this is going to play out, Mike. Depends, I guess, on who gets through the traffic the best. Mark Martin is shooting through it there right now, though. Ready has to back off just a little bit as he came up on Dick Trickle there. There you see Gordon. He's tied up back there. Jared has caught up with Gordon. Dale Jared is absolutely flying around the racetrack. He, he moved in some 15 car lengths on Jeff Gordon in just a couple of laps there. Jared has led just a lap or two today when the car's ahead of him pitted. 
Only one lap, I think, but that's all it takes to get the five bonus points. And here he is, your Ford Quality Care Cam on Jared's car, right behind Jeff Gordon. Exactly right, and lap traffic is a very important one. As far as these guys fighting for, for position, you can see the uh, 24 there, Jeff Gordon, going very, very low on the racetrack. Easy enough for me to see as they go through the middle part of the corner. DJ picks the throttle up and doing a great job. When buddies get excited up here, yeah. I cinch up my seatbelt. <laughs> 13 laps to go. Dale Jarrett, the fastest at lap 187. 177.9 miles an hour. Might not be that way this time, though. Although Mark is in traffic up there, but he had a clear run until he came off and turned four. And we'll see how it shakes out as far as speeds are concerned. But depending on where you catch traffic and how it affects you. Jarrett goes for second. Underneath Jeff Gordon, turn one. Can't make the pass. Yeah, car on the bottom. Don't say that. He's going to the inside. That's trickle there in the 90. Not quite enough room. It's the 24 of Jeff Gordon makes a little better time on the outside group. And Mark Martin is through most of that traffic now. And Gordon and Jarrett still have three cars that they have to pass. Martin only has one, and he's about to take care of it now, coming off of turn four. Jarrett with another run. And Jeff Gordon. Tight draft off of late speed. Gordon looks to the outside. And speed comes up the racetrack into turn one. And it'll be 10 laps to go when they return. Mark Martin is loving that fact that, that Gordon and Jared are caught up in traffic back there because he had to go through that same traffic too and he got through it in a hurry. And Ward Burton just ahead of Bobby Labonte. This battle is for sixth place. 22 is Burton, 18 is Labonte, and Bill Elliott right with them. Six, seventh, and eighth. Ten laps to go for Mark Martin trying to win his fourth race of the year. Taking a time trial type line down the front straightaway, cutting it low at the start finish line, sweeping back up high in the corner. Boy, I tell you, Mark Martin, three time winner already this year. This six car is just doing everything he wants it to do right now. He's in the rocking chair. It's his race to lose by making a mistake. If he does not make a mistake, I don't think he's going to lose. Dale Earnhardt, one lap off the pace, 15th position behind Kenny Irwin Jr. and Ernie Irvin. But that's a great drive for Dale Earnhardt today, having to go to the rear with a backup car that had not been on the racetrack because of the wreck yesterday. There he moves around Brett Budine. That's not for position. He's already ahead of Brett. Brett is back in 33rd position. He's being shown four laps down. And here's that battle for second, buddy. Now well, laps to go here. You can see Jarrett taking the low line. The 24, you can see the front of his car giving up just a little bit going to the higher line as he starts off the corner. Jarrett not able to close in just yet, though. Ned, do you battle right here, or do you hook up and try to get Mark Martin? Can you? Uh, no, I don't think that, that hooking up on this racetrack, two cars working together, is nearly as effective as it is, as I said earlier, at Daytona and Talladega. They, you go for the position here. Dale Jarrett, is he tuned in to us? He's having a hard look at Jeff Gordon right there, Ned. Well, he's, he's trying his best to get around him. That's five bonus points plus a good bit of money. Eight and we'll, we'll get a bragging rights. Eight to yep. go. Yeah, you're right, buddy. Mark, is, he, he's got it all to himself out there now. They had closed it down to less than a second, and now it's up to about one and three tenths seconds. Yeah, that's the one thing that you and I both know from past experience. You never count your money until the last lap. There is lap traffic in front of Mark Martin that could come into play. It's never over until the checkered flag comes down. Two of those are lead lap cars fighting for position, Jimmy Spencer and Daryl Walter. Here is Jarrett, start finish line, even with Gordon. Draws ahead going into turn number one for second place. Not quite. Here comes Gordon on the outside. High line, right in the high part of the racetrack. You see, right now, Jared fighting back on the inside. He just couldn't get the line that he needed. We've seen that several times today when Mark Martin was trying to pass through Gordon. Jared a little bit, uh, picks up a little bit down the straightaway, but here comes Gordon back going into the turn. He's hanging tough up there. That's what he's supposed to do. Every time he's been challenged, he's thrown it hard into turn three. But here comes Jarrett back on the bottom. 
And Mark Martin absolutely loving this because, I don't know if that would have been the last lap, I don't know which one of those cars would have got second because he's able to pull away while they're back there battling for the second position. Martin's lead increased by six tenths of a second on that one lap as these two fight side by side. Gordon third in the points. Jarrett fifth in the points, just seven apart. Either. <laughs> Down comes Jared. <laughs> the door was shut. <laughs> locked. Bolted. You got it. Double locked. Well, you can rest assured Jeff Gordon's not going to give up. That's where he's strong. Coming off turn two. Down that back straightaway. He gets a good run off the second corner. But this time, Jared is able to hold it. Two Fords and a Chevrolet at the front of the field here in Michigan. It'll be four laps to go. That number six, Mark Martin. He has won here in Bush Grand National, in ASA, in the International Race of Champions, and four Winston Cup races here. And he holds a two and a half second lead. Well, I can say it now. I told you guys before this thing started. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Professor Baker. I mentioned he was fastest in practice yesterday. Do I get a look at you? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Ned. You heard him say it, right? <laughs> Mark Martin is fast at every racetrack this year. He has been good, having the best year of his career. Proving once again how good of a race driver he is and how strong of a race car he has. Three laps to go as he comes up to lap the 11th place car, Jimmy Spencer. He's already put Darrell Waltrip a lap down in 12th. It's nice when you have a race car that'll do that. You can see Mark Martin just turn under Jimmy Spencer and go right by him in the middle part of the corner. It's so much fun here when the car works. It's so miserable when it does not. Over the winter, Jack Rouse shook up his team somewhat. We've talked about the change in crew chiefs between Richard Childress's two teams today, Dale Earnhardt and Mike Skinner. Jack Rouse moved Mark Martin's whole team from Liberty, North Carolina to Mooresville. Left Steve Meal, the longtime crew chief in Liberty. There's Jack Rouse, the team owner. And moving up with Jimmy Fennick was Mark Martin and the whole Valvoline team. It was quite a shakeup. Folks thought that maybe Martin wouldn't perform as well. He's done very well. Three wins, looking for his fourth right now, and he is fourth in the point standings. Well, you can see Dale Jarrett has got away for a little bit there from the 24 of Jeff Gordon. Right now, in first, second, and third, these guys are have a pretty good interval between them. And Mark Martin scheduled to get the white flag this time by. Looking at John Andretti, who came back from a practice crash this weekend to run in the 20th position. White flag. One lap to go. Track. Mark Martin has been flawless today, and when he got the lead, he never looked back anymore. He looked back and saw those guys racing side by side for just a moment <laughs> and said, hey, that's good. I'm going on. Moving up on Gary Bradbury. There's Dale Jarrett in second place by eight-tenths of a second over Jeff Gordon. And the point leader, Jeremy Mayfield, he's on the lead lap in fifth to the checkered flag for the 26th time in his Winston Cup career, Mark Martin. And for second, Dale Jarrett. For third, Jeff Gordon. Jimmy Fennick, the winning crew chief. Jeff Burton will finish fourth. Jeremy Mayfield should come across fifth. Bill Elliott in sixth, all on the lead lap. Bobby Labonte will be seventh. He'll be the first Pontiac. And Paul Sitter Ward Burton is eighth. Joe Nemechek ninth and Wally Dolan back tenth, all on the lead lap. We'll be back with more from Michigan Speedway after this. That's a good run by DJ. 
you know. Yeah, like Todd said, they never quite got it right. He was coming there before he got to racing with Jeff. But. Okay. Nice show. One, two, three, four. This is Ken. One, two, three, four. I'm here. One, two, three, four. Do you have you? Okay. Mark Martin is coming in. We didn't do it. About for you, the drivers, you know, that we've got to talk about. Oh, that's right. We didn't do it. I did tell you I thought he was going to win. Yeah, so I didn't say we did it on the air. Oh, okay. He's <laughs> okay, Mopping up after a busy day here at Michigan, a little guzzle of Gatorade, and he's ready to pop out a car number six. His first win in this event, his fourth on this track. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, Mark Martin. What a great run. Absolutely flawless all day. Well, car got better and better as we went. Arlene, Matt, I wish y'all were here, man. That was a great run for us. I didn't think we had the car for a long part of the way, but uh, after we got that caution, we it seems like the 24 lost a little bit, and we came on strong. Buddy Baker was pointing out that you were digging on the bottom. You were able to get down there and hang on to that bottom line all day. My car would run on the bottom really good. Uh, I want to thank uh, Valvoline and Cummins and uh, Eagle One, Bugles, Bosch, all these folks that support us, and especially the guys at Roush Race and Jack Roush for giving me this chance to, to drive a race car like this. Just incredible. Jack, what a great car you had today. Yeah, we... Uh, we, we kind of got Mark in trouble there. We, we stressed our fuel early. You know how it goes at Michigan. Sometimes that can be a factor. So we got him behind with old tires, and he had to struggle. But at the end there, I wasn't about to see him on old tires. Jimmy Nike, Fonford, he said, we're coming in early. We're not giving no position on tires. You made it up. All right, let's go right to Dick Bergren. And Dale Jarrett finishes second today. It's his ninth top five of 1998. But that Mark Martin is one tough guy. What would it have taken to beat him? I don't know. Uh, he was awful good, and we want to congratulate Mark and his team. They did a terrific job, but uh, we were good, just not quite good enough again. Uh, Mark's car seemed to go on the bottom a little bit better than I could, especially on new tires, and uh, just couldn't quite make it stick down there. I was a little bit too loose and kept trying to tighten it up and never got it to that point. Great performance all day, though. Congratulations. To Ralph. All right, we're caught up with Jeff Gordon, and let's see what we can find out. Hey, Jeff, your car really seemed to drop off at the end of the long runs there. What was happening? Well, I don't know if it was as much as we dropped off. Those guys just got really fast. Uh, and they were fast all day long, actually. I think if Mark had started up front, he would have dominated the event. We got a jump on them. They had no cautions. We had great pit stops and a good race car, and we were just able to keep it uh, up front there. But, you know, late in the race, I tried to hold those guys off, but Mark was so strong. He could drive in like we were driving in those IROC cars yesterday, and then he could just turn the middle and go. And I got a little bit tight, and I, I probably made a mistake, and I think I did because because um, I told the guys to tighten it up, and that hurt us. We tried to free it up, but, uh, you know, it just didn't work. To Mike Joy. Jeff Gordon led 132 laps. Mark Martin led 48, including the last one. Martin and Jack Roush enjoy victory lane. It's the fourth victory at Michigan for team owner Jack Roush, who lives in nearby Livonia. Martin, Jarrett, Gordon, Jeff Burton, Jeremy Mayfield, and Bill Elliott, the top six. Here are the rest of your lead lap cars, then Jimmy Spencer and Darrell Waltrip, one lap down. Kenny Irwin, Ernie Irvin, Dale Earnhardt, Chad Little, Rusty Wallace, and Sterling Marlin. These cars are one lap down, all the way back through Terry Labonte. From John Andretti on back, these cars are two laps down. 
And beginning with Rich Bickle, cars three laps back from 27th place, back to Brett Bodine in 33rd. Everyone from Gary Bradbury in 34th on back, five or more laps behind the winner, Mark Martin whose 26th career win ties him with Fred Lorenzen for 19th on NASCAR's all-time victory list. We'll update you on the Winston Cup points when we return to Michigan Speedway. In celebration of NASCAR's 50th anniversary, CBS Sports coverage of the Michigan 400 is sponsored by Texaco, a world of energy. Ford, the official truck of NASCAR, is built Ford top. And by Remington's Microscreen Pre-Shaper, built to shave incredibly close. Stay tuned to CBS Sports for final round coverage of the Buick Classic from Westchester Country Club in Rye, New York. Coming up next. Jeremy Mayfield holds on to the Winston Cup point lead. Jeff Gordon is going to be just 26 points back. Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, and Terry Labonte, the top five, stay knotted within 68 points. Leaving Michigan after 14 of 33 races. Man, that's a close battle. So for Ken Squire, Ned Jarrett, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergeron, Ralph Shaheen, and Bill Stevens, I'm Mike Joy saying so long for Michigan Speedway, where Mark Martin has won the 1998 Michigan 400. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports home of the Daytona 500.